the infamous Turkey Tom. Oh yeah. Uh, so so that'll be that'll be fun. Um, we 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 have we have a we have quite a, an interesting chemistry. So I, I think I think people should be entertained by that. Okay, it should be working this time around. I am encouraged to assume so. Anyway. Well, I mean, you can probably keep track of uh, the views, I assume. Oh, there's people talking in chat, which is enough. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, people talking in chat, they're clicking the links. I mean, easy peasy, squeeze the lemon. Mm hmm. Hello, everybody. Even though we're still going to have to wait for a bit to let, to let a couple fall in. Um, no, no, no. How, did, how did, out of curiosity, did you ask to go on Drinking Peasants or were you uh, sent? Um, someone, I think someone stated, like, who do you want to come on? And someone was, like, the right opinion. And then they added me and said, do you want to come on? Um, yeah. and I was like, sure, you know, I don't care. Uh, why not? I mean, you'll, you'll come on to anything, including... Yeah, EFAPs. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll come on, I'll come on to anything as long as it, you know, we don't, we get, we don't get too extremist, which, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't consider EFAP. Um, <laughs> Six million wasn't enough. <laughs> I, th I, th I think EFAP <laughs> right, guys, is pretty I controversial. A great time. Um, I, I haven't watched the other episodes, so I wouldn't wouldn't exactly I, know. I would maybe, never maybe, have. I sh maybe I should have. Maybe. maybe <laughs> oh well, I mean, I, I regret. You could have watched the ones about you if you wanted, but I mean, I, mean, I could have, but but it, but it would have been bad for my my grades. Um, Your grades? Yeah, because because I had I I had. Uh, classes and exams, and oh, that okay. was kind of the priority. You know. And um, if it, you know, if, if if I might catch up with them in the holidays, um, but right now, like, because actually, grades are doing well for like the last six and a half months. The grades have been really solid, and I was like, I don't want to break this. Um, equally, I know that the watching watching your video, you know, regardless of what I think of it. It will. It will probably. It will probably be quite like. It will be quite a drain on me. Just. I would just imagine. Couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't want to get into the wrong mindset before these things. And that you know, I, I completely understand why you responded. And I don't oppose that at all. Um, it was just. It was just probably like I had to put myself first in that instance and just and just keep focus on on what should be like most important to my future currently. Fair enough. Um... I think audio levels are all good. Hey, Rags, do you want to just like say hello? Hello, everybody. Yeah, you're you're probably the loudest. That's good. That's that's a oh, rare right. occurrence. That's that's the way it should be. Yeah, you do, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> I can control it, thankfully. Um, so yes, despite popular assumptions, TRO is here. You can see him. That's his. Yeah. That's his icon. I mean, no one else can have that. I mean, and, um, I'm in person. I mean, you could co copy me. I mean, you could find another. Smug British person to take my place, but Colossal's never going to come on here. Yeah, well, <laughs> may, uh, well, you. I mean, I think I think he mainly wouldn't come on mainly because he just can't be bothered. He's always off in some foreign country doing business deals. He's a he's a he's a he's a he's an interesting bloke. Oh, Fortier reckons I'm lower than you two. I mean, is it really bad? Could you guys just sort of? deal with it and put the microphone right next to me right now as well you, you sound fine to me well, yeah you uh, sound fine to me as well it's weird right. i'm not sure these things just like change between streams like i don't do anything but it's just like no this is happening now it's like hmm. mm. but um i mean have you ch are you are you streaming an obs yes can you check you can check the levels i think on the little uh front well, control panel yeah the levels we we i look to be peaking around about the same place as you guys so that's why i figured it was okay well, but if not then well i mean how, how, is it how many people are saying that like what's what's the general consensus we've got i can hear you you sound really arrogant to me for some reason <laughs> Um, not by a turn, sounds fine accent. for me, it's fine, audio's fine. All right, if enough people say it's fine, then we should be good. Um, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so anybody who's suddenly jumped to this video and is like, what, they're not talking about the Vox video, uh, they'll, I'll just put a, a, a timestamp in a pinned comment so you can jump to that if if that's what you were looking mm. for rather than the what we're going to start with, which is, first of all, uh, uh, Rags, happy 10th episode of EFAP. We got to 10. It has been 10 episodes already. Oh, beautiful. It feels like just yesterday we stumbled upon this <laughs> format. It was what would even was the first episode? I think Jared Genesis was was in there with uh, was it Patrick Willems? Yeah, that, that was kind of what started this, wasn't it? 
something like that. But at the beginning, it was kind of mixed with uh, Wolf's podcast too. They yeah, it was kinda... essentially. It was kind of like your streams where you respond as well. It's, it's not like this is new. Everybody else has done streams where they respond to videos, but I don't know. It's sort of just. But ours just are happened. full of high tier content. I mean, the 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 similar factor is we respond to video essays. That's the main, the main goal like we wouldn't respond to commentary videos or something because that would be strange we wouldn't respond to let's plays that would also be strange um we could. or political videos we don't really cover either um we didn't i don't know what you would call that video where we looked at the guy who said that um the last jedi can't be hated if it's being bought remember that it's can't, it can't be hated if it like he said, it can can't be hated that much if it's the best-selling Blu-ray of 2018. Oh, that short one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that guy. Yeah, that was, that was the 12-year-old caught in a 35-year-old man's body. <laughs> yeah, the first three or four episodes didn't even have a name, but we've we've which come that far. Which money? Um, what, does, what does EFAP stand for out of interest? Every frame a pause. Wow. <laughs> that should that should be something that's in the uh, like the description because a lot of people don't know. I'm planning on revamping the descriptions and the thumbnails once I'm done with TFA, which means you know expect it within the next few years that uh, we will sort that right out. But I do actually want to spruce up uh, EFAP because it's it's been a lot of fun. I like EFAP, and as for the, there's many people asking about um, not only when will Wolf come back, but will we respond to Eric Taxon's video on on Wolf? Uh, Wolf's obviously on his hiatus still, he's obviously gonna come back when he wants to come back, and that'll be the video we cover alongside... I've heard it's, I've heard it's horrible. It's, um, the main gist I got from it is that Eric Taxon thinks that Wolf's argument is that if you force a woman into something, it automatically becomes bad, and Eric is like, no, that's bad writing, it has nothing to do with whether or not she's a woman, and, like, that's accounted for in Wolf's video. And it's not a surprise because Eric plays about three minutes of Wolf's uh, eighteen-minute video. I think it is. So yeah, because Wolf's video was pretty good. No, yeah, I uh, I quite liked it, and it's not. I didn't even think it was that controversial. It's just like stop going so heavy on um, like the way to fix this product is to now make them, you know, X thing, which is never something. I think I go over it in my actual TFA critique that I I I see that as like you know what happened with Phasma, all of the um promotional material about Phasma, they can't resist saying that she's a girl and that's why you should see it, and it's just like, you barely even, she's another character, and you can barely even find out that she was a girl in any way. Yeah, people like us who don't like The Last Jedi, we hate women. <laughs> well, they shouldn't have told us at all. That's the result. Why'd you hate women? It should have been a reveal at the very end, like Metroid. Like, oh god, it's a woman. Oh no, this whole time. I knew there was something off about her. <laughs> I knew that we did, like, it was a reason I hated Metroid. I knew, uh, there was some aura coming out of her. Uh, so yeah, just so people aren't confused, in the background we've just got the video from TRO uh, playing so that it sort of matches what, what the conversation's going to be about for a bit, which is going over pretty much everything that happened. And yeah, I was yeah. going to say, I did talk about the, um, the Eric Taxon thing. It's going to be asked again and again, so we're probably going to have to say, like, every episode until Wolf comes back. So but at least you guys know who's, uh, who's listening. Um, I wish I followed this. I, I do not have a clue. This is what oh, don't worry. This is like introduction stuff. Once we get this out of the way, you'll be fine. I mean, that's fair <laughs> enough. Like, yeah, no, it's all right. I'm just, I'm just like, I, I clearly don't follow YouTube enough about this. Uh, Eric Tax on Dishonored Wolf and not all that, obviously. That matter. There's such strange connections because I think Eric Taxon is like at least acquainted with H Bomber guy who's like doesn't like me, and then I'm friends with Wolf, and it's like a completely unrelated connection. But... I mean. The, the the only thing I know about Eric Taxon is that he makes music. He does. And oh, cool. Yeah, I think I think so um, because uh, I I followed music critics quite quite closely, and one of one of the, one of them that, that I used to follow uh, seems to be acquainted with Eric Taxon and and, and has, has reviewed some of his music. So that's 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 like I was thinking to myself like for a few minutes like I know I know Eric Taxon from somewhere, um, and I think that's that's where I think he makes think he makes uh, music. So there you go. Wasn't a great sign that like his video he disables ratings on all of his videos and um, he's got a video apparently where he explains it so we can we can, we're probably gonna check that out as well before judging anything wow. but I don't know why you would disable ratings in a because he knows that it's gonna be low <laughs> and he doesn't want people to see that and so he's coming up with some crazy reason about oh here's why I don't want to wow rags do you hate women <laughs> yes bigoted bastard I'll let somebody <laughs> choose to get rid of their their ratings. <laughs> This is this is this is uh this is going great.
Excellently, I should say. Um, there was one thing I wanted to clarify because I read on the other the other podcast. Um, there was like the 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 whole thing about force ghosts and whether or not they could like interact. I really actually don't have a definitive answer. I don't know. I just know that um, if you say that Yoda can do what he can do in the latest one, it it just raises questions of why he didn't do it before. You know, like the idea of what does Obi Wan mean when he says. I cannot interfere. What does it definitively mean? And uh, does him talking in Luke's head count as interfering? Because that's kind of what my argument was. It's like that counts as interfering and he chose not to with Vader. Because, you know, when Luke is like, Ben, help me, when he's like nearly fallen off Bespin, I don't think he was expecting much more than Ben just turning up in his head like, yo. Uh, like he did in um, in Hoth when Luke was nearly dead. You know, that sort of thing. And, and Obi-Wan was just like, nope. Uh, not doing that, and I assumed it was because he decided to go off on his own sort of thing, but again, totally more to discuss on that for anybody who's um, super into the uh, Star Wars lore. So, yeah, that's that's about that. Um, so first we'll go over, I guess, what, what what even happened. Like, it all it all began with the fateful day that Ryan Johnson released his movie, and then... It sucked. <laughs> and then I think Tiara's gonna have to remain neutral on that. He's like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like uh, I don't really. I mean, I'm 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 not here to debate about that mm. anyway. So it's not. Um, and then I hate everything. Put out his video, which was like, um, I think it was intended to be a response to the toxic fan base element of it. Correct. Mm. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, that was the intention, uh, from what I understand. Unfortunately, uh, it's clear that 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 didn't that didn't quite come out the way he he didn't. He'd completely get out the way he envisioned it, definitely. I mean, when I spoke uh, to him, uh, the main thing I said to him that was trying to get the point across for why it was confusing is he involved a couple of things that are sort of like wrenches in in the point, as in like, um, yeah, he has some defenses of the film involved when it's like, if you're just making a statement about how people are being way too toxic, so like you don't even need that, but you threw that in there, it's like, okay. He also threw in that um, he, he says, so I think it was something like... Um, something backlash like insane or, or vicious or excessive backlash and mm -hmm. he had like a screenshot of um reviews where people were saying like you know luke's character was assassinated or i i, I thought the film was blah 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 like relatively reasonable statements yeah yeah definitely. and so again you just be like huh i mean i think it's one of those things it's about like for me it was at the time i just kind of identified the overarching narrative though i understand that there was there were details where where he should have kind of been been clearer and i've i've been victim to that too with some of my videos that i'll probably address in the future um i'll 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 try and like make an overarching narrative but i'll i'll end up like falling down on some of the details and even though i think to myself at the time you know I, i've been pretty clear here uh, whether it's whether it's the nature of some people or whether whether that's just the way it is, people people do tend to like there are like things where people will like say, oh, so what are you actually saying here? Yeah. And so it's it, you know I think it's one of just I think it's just the nature of being a YouTuber. You know, it's all about clarity. Um, and um, I think I think you know it's fair that he can hold up his, like you know I'm trying to say you know I should have been clearer there. Uh, I remember watching it and just being like, what in the hell are you trying to say? Like. Uh... And genuinely coming to the conclusion of like, well, that was a pretty balked video because it, it sounded like he was trying to say that the Last Jedi isn't that bad and that you're all being too mean, and lumps well, yeah, in everybody I, into the same sort of audience. Generally, I think I think the issue was that um, he he kind of conflated a few sets of arguments, and in the end, he was like, what he tried to say was that basically um, the hate isn't justified um, because the film. Um, isn't that bad now? <laughs> because of because now I'm not I'm not not here to say like whether the film was good or bad in a way, but the problem is that that in itself is like um, is a bit of a strange argument to make because to me at least like the the key the key point of view for me is the fact that it's it's a piece of you know generally like it's it's not I mean to me at least to many people. It's it, it is it, it isn't like inflicting hatred towards anyone, and therefore you know nothing like that is justified. And I think everyone like generally can agree that the the, the death threats and stuff like that is not. That's actually not where really I would like, sort of begin. I'd be like, uh, isn't it redundant? It's like a, saying given a death threat for basically any film that's just a fictional fantasy sort of thing. It's just like, well, yeah, anybody's doing like you know the point about 
someone said the Wilhelm scream wasn't in the film, making it bad. It's like, why even, uh, you know, actually we could, we could address that if you want. Like Rags said several times that, um, why address these comments and your response was they exist. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, one of the things was at the time, it was like, to me, from my perspective, um, I, I, I saw and, and, and that I put that argument forward at the time very poorly. And retrospectively, it's like, for me, it was like, wow, I really should have worded that better. And at the time, it's like, when you pick um, the comments, when you pick the subject of the matter that you're going to argue, anyone can pick those and, and argue those but at the same time once you pick that you can't suddenly bring up irrelevant points for me um what i viewed as those comments to him was the source of the argument and therefore he can he can use them in that instance to make an argument from them however um i kind of like use the phrase like he can do what he wants which is a terrible thing to say um without a doubt and I really should have worked out how well, to because I was going to say you're right, but obviously Rags was gunning for why as opposed to oh, yeah. whether he can. And, and I think I think the reason why at the time, especially from from his perspective, was that was that he was kind of trying to use them as like rather than it was go it was complementary to his point. Like he was he was saying, look at how bad this hate has gotten. You know, don't you think we've gone too far? Well, and so and, an additional interesting point there is that um we never actually see any top comments that are um vicious the, the i think the best mm -hmm. he showed was like a, a comment that said something like you know kill yourself and it was at like four while um yeah the, like and then of course the wilhelm screen that's not even that's not even vicious that's not aggressive that's just stupid it's like if you said the last jedi is good because it lacks the wilhelm scream i'd be like what the hell are you like <laughs> either way it doesn't make sense yeah yeah and i do i do understand that um i think for him it was like picking um because he he problem was he kind of um picked a few different arguments and conflated them uh, i've already used the word conflated but we'll use it again because you know it's true sure. um there's a there's the question about nitpicking which is a legitimate argument. You know, we can have that discussion. There's a question about going too far with the hate. And you and the and the Wilhelm scream in a way is the question of, of nitpicking. Um and <laughs> But I don't even consider and, it a valid complaint. You know, like uh, uh with nitpicks I'll often consider to be something where it's like the you know, the car in the background, Lord of the Rings. It's a nitpick it's like, oh, oh who yeah, cares? I mean I mean but yeah, like, I mean you're, you're, whether you're right. or not I mean, a Wilhelm it, scream is there, like what even what I mean yeah. It, it's it's one of those things it's it's not as you say it's not really a valid argument but let's let's say you know for, what is for, the, for the credence yeah um for the credence we, we give it like that point and say you know it was a it was a fairly min minor thing to like say that the film wasn't good providing that that point exists um i i'd say that that he kind of tried to fight too many points at once while in a way effectively not kind of successfully fighting the points at all because the greater question that surrounded his his argument should have been a question of like has the star wars fan base become too um become too like either too hateful either too nitpicky they're different things in themselves and if he kind of shaped a video around that specific argument there could have been some credence but the problem was he broke kind of broke it up as you say with the with, with the review of the film um and tried to make the argument that it wasn't that bad but in a way people had already made their mind up about the film on that behalf and the people who are going to be sending hate messages and and so on and and and, and like nitpicks and all that they're not really necessarily particularly can they're not going to be they're not going to have their mind swayed by by ihe's arguments and i think that was the problem it was a very disconnected video and i completely like retrospectively going back accept that that video had it had its problems without a doubt and although i do understand where what he was trying to say and i'll always communicate that the best way i can um you know, it's 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 flawed, and it's it it was. I think it was detached, uh, most importantly, in its points of view that it was trying to address. Uh, yeah, well, that's that's pretty much our conclusion because I'm pretty sure that's why Rags wanted to make his video. 
yeah and i i, I don't i don't really like um i don't really like take issue i never really took issue with the fact like people want to make videos on these things um and I think obviously, like, you know, that's, that's completely your prerogative. Um, but I guess I took issue with with just the delivery at the time. Um, and I I felt a lot of people like asked me, like, why did I make that video? Because there are very few videos that I've watched and I thought to myself, I want to respond to that because very few videos provoke strong feelings at the time that video provoked a strong feeling in me because as someone who is a friend of ihe mm -hmm. um and without a doubt is biased to that extent i completely accept that that i have that i have the bias i try to i try to alienate myself from that but you know it's always going to be hard to an extent Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I doubt we're going to get you to say tonight that you think it's a bad video for I Hate Everything. Like, that's not really the intention, especially because you're yeah. friends with him. Uh, yeah, and and obviously, um, the the issues the issues that I had mainly came down to the fact that 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 it was given the fact that I know IHE and I know what he's like as a person, and I know his. Um, and I know his stances on stuff, and I know that he's very like mild mannered. And, and well, uh, um, I, I we found that out, you know. Like, obviously, this is skipping yeah. the timeline a little bit, but like when I got to speak to him, me and Wolf managed to get very clearly what he actually felt. He yeah. just didn't. Yeah. Con he conveyed it faster in conversation than he did in his own video, which is the interesting part because it was also proofed by you as well, right? Yeah, yeah, and 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 it was a, it was a. It was a, it was a decent conversation that I mean, I think I think the mistake was that it happened so late at night and and um and we should have kind of scheduled it a bit more clearly and just well you know why just, it happened right you remember why yeah well no I I completely understand like why it happened then and there but if if I think maybe if we take a step back and thought like you know let's just try and maybe maybe be a bit more cautious with how we arrange this. <laughs> like we may have been able to get a bit more clarity on on the thought, I, but you know, I am on board with that one hundred percent. But again, just a reminder, and you did you did heart the comment. Uh, he called me childish, arrogant, and condescending. Yeah, yeah, and I I can I I I completely understand like why why we had that that call there and there. Um, maybe, and I'm not necessarily saying like, oh, you know, it was unreasonable because in the in the circumstances, like you know, I would I wanted to do it as well. Um, but in hindsight, I would have said, let's, let's, let's do it. Like maybe like around this time. Because, yeah, no, I think, I think that makes sense. I've always yeah. wanted to have another conversation, maybe even live with him just about Star Wars, but I think Star Wars has melted his brain for, for the most part. I think, I think, I think it has. Um, and I think it's kind of exhausted a lot of people, understandably. So it seems such a such a specifically interesting topic to have such vigorous debate over but you know rigorous rigorous debate rigorous debates mm -hmm. um um and so <laughs> i did not get that much sleep last night unfortunately <laughs> um and and therefore i think it, it, it i mean it's it's it exhausted me um but i've kind of i kind of gone through that stage now um i'm fine i find it fairly like back like placid about it again um, which is which is typically my my general um, my general uh, approach. Uh, I guess I just guess I just I'm fairly I'm a fairly placid person. There are just a few things that will rub me the wrong way, and then I'll get then I'll get riled up, and then I might make a video, and then I might start making a video, and then be like, "Hang on a minute, I'm just pissed off." Well, um, I'd say that applies to me and Rags. Like we're relatively chill, but there'll be things that'll piss us off every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was going to say, timeline-wise then, so Rags makes his video, and I did watch Rags' video as soon as it came out, and I was relatively, I was not only happy with it, because I'm pretty sure he gave me quite the promotion, so it, it helped my channel grow, but um, I thought he was giving some, le less so like this, this definitive analytical counter, more so Rags operating as the audience, being like, what are you saying with this, and then what... Yeah, there wasn't would... much analytical to respond to, really. Hmm. And so, like, uh, the way I, I, I said this in the two streams, and I was just going to see what you, you take on it, is it's like, um, I hate everything sort of rambled out some thoughts, and I'm not trying to say that uh, mm -hmm. in a critical way, and then Rags yeah. did a response to that off the cuff, 
play his video and then say what he thinks. Play so you got thoughts on thoughts, and then you did what I would call an analytical response. And so it's like almost chaos because it's uh, yeah. so much inference yeah. on on all ends, which causes um. I mean, you know, mm. I, I I think I've already told you, but it shouldn't be a shock to 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 be aware that I think the the video here lies rag. Stop hating what I like. The special guest, I kind of hate that video. <laughs> like, that's fine. I don't blame you. I don't. I don't blame you for hating it. You know. You know, it's less to do with you, but it's it's obviously still to do with you, but it's more to do I with mean, a different element. It's still to do with me. I mean, it's, you know, I I take responsibility. Um, and if you hate it, you hate it. Mm. It is what it is, and we have we've had this discussion, like about this before. Like, what should we do about it? And in the end, you know, we came to the conclusion: you no, know, people just got to judge it from their own perspective. And if they hate it, they hate it. And you know. It is what it is. As a video, to me, it was an important step forward for my channel. At the same time, it was an extremely messy, disorganized step forward for my channel. And it gave me, it was an important learning experience. And it gave me a lot of time to reflect on, on how to improve my content if I wanted to do it in that style in the future. Um... We can, I was going to say, because this, I just, I already know there's going to be people in the audience who are like, why isn't Muller asking specific? And I'll be like, let's get a little bit more specific so that I make sure that these things are covered. Um, we'll start, I'll just start with a couple of easy things. So like, there's this idea as we were approaching the video that um, we really couldn't tell exactly how you were approaching Rags's videos in. Was it chronologically or was it that you tried to sort of section off portions? Mm. Because, like, um, we started trying to find the timestamps of his video in order to, like, do a little bit of checking, and, like, we would have nothing to work with because it could have been at any point, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I tried to follow the video chronologically, and that was the general approach that I'd taken in that moment. But there were times when I kind of called back to previous moments. Mm -hmm. And... Obviously, the, I did section it off in a way um, because of editing. And I know we'll probably get to the editing in a bit. Um, but uh, yes, those were the main reasons. I approached it chronologically. Uh, I kind of, I hope that was somewhat not one of the, I hope that was one of the less debatable things. But well, equally, yeah, there were moments that I went backwards and said, well, he said he said this there, and now he's saying this hill. Some, someone did that, um, pretty much. Have well, you... Throughout the problem that we had was we had no idea where, like, we had no idea what the structure was or mm. how it was going from one thing to the next or if we were going... We had no idea where in my video that this was a response to where I was. And we were constantly having the issue of we don't know what I'm talking about because yes. in the video there'd be Rag says X and then there's just the clip. And I don't even know if I'd call it a soundbite more than a clip of me just saying X. And we would have no idea what the context mm. would be of me saying mm. that would be. And to sort of bolster that, the idea is like there is a point and I don't blame you for this because it is a criticism if it's valid. Uh, by responding to every single sentence of someone's video, you can miss certain things or at least misinterpret certain things. That was a criticism I got for my response to H-Bomber guy. However, it does mean I play every part of the video, so you have every single quote as the audience. And um, our problem mm. was, we were like, wait, so did Rag say that? And then this became way more of a problem when Quinton was introduced because it started. he started saying things that we knew we didn't say. Okay. Um, with regards to what I said, what happened, and I'll be perfectly candid here, was that I wrote out the script with the intention of paraphrasing what Rag said to make it clearer. Mm -hmm. I had, and obviously with every single thing I said, um, like I, I sought to make it very clear what Rags meant. I never sought to misrepresent anything Rags said. Um, on the other, and what happened was when we got to the editing process, I was like, actually, I feel like we should play clips here of these things. So, as you say, people don't 
have to go and check if Rags actually said that. And well, yeah, the, yeah, and and th- basically, it created a very confusing dynamic where I would say I there were situations I tried to I tried to edit the parts out where I, I said Rag said this but equally I there were parts where I left it in and it became very confusing because I would say something and then I play as you say I play a clip of Rags and like you like why did I need to announce what Rags said and yeah, too, yeah. uh, and and so it was it was for me I I had a big problem with 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 uh, structural confusion with how I was delivering it in a way I did what I thought was the best that I could do with regards to it um but equally if I had approached it as a response video and 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 clip response um clip response uh clip response um it would have been a lot clearer and as someone who was trying to like go into this new genre, I can completely accept why that would have been tonally confusing and a complete fuck up. I mean, I would totally recommend just, you know, if you find yourself saying they said this, be like, oh, just may as well play the clip. You know, it'll take the same amount of time, right? Yeah, yeah. And, Hopefully. And um, that's, I, you do not, you would not believe how much I cut from that. I really did. I really tried to like cut it down. Um, um, because at one point it my my audio was over like uh, two hours, and I I really did cut down what I what I said, and I did want to make it clear the points that I was responding to, but I I think yeah. too especially because because time does eventually become an issue when things start getting long like this, would be mm. the things that you seemingly reluctantly agreed with me on, don't bother even having those, just play the parts that you either have contention with or the parts that you didn't like which does so bring up way... a point there was a strange pattern with your agreements with rags yeah i you, mean um, the problem you would do uh, sorry I, like i'll be quick it's, it's okay just... to admit i'm right your your agreements with him like seemed that. very backhanded as in say for example i hated everything about rags and then he said two plus two is four i'd be like well if we consider mathematics i suppose you could definitely use that in a context where it mm. would be acceptable and it would be like do you agree? You know, like yeah, I, I completely, I completely understand that. My approach was it to it was like I didn't want to necessarily go out to disagree with Rags on everything because I, I don't disagree with Rags and everything. And, and yes, as you say, I could have cut it out, but I didn't just want it to be necessarily a complete hammering. But then again, on the other hand, maybe, maybe that's what it needed to be in a way to create a cohesive narrative on the, on the, uh, and back to my, my side, uh, I, I just felt like I wanted to kind of give it as, as fair an approach as I can and say, well, you know, he's not wrong about everything. And I didn't want, yeah. and the problem was I didn't want people like when I approached this uh, video, I didn't want people to think, oh, he's, he's just picking out the points where he disagrees with rags and he's presenting it in a biased fashion, which once again, like I I'm, I'm biased to an extent. I'm not going to completely admit that, but on the other hand, I didn't want it to go that far into the whole, into the whole, like just absolutely unequivocal hammering of, of, of him. Yeah. I or guess you even you're here. <laughs> so, so sort of, you could like two choices would be one to be like, I don't disagree with everything in this video. I'm just going to highlight the things I do disagree with. Or, like I said, uh, the way I did mm. it with H Bomber guy would would be I just play the clip. Say he says uh, Dark Souls is a game created by blah blah blah. This date, blah, blah. I'm just like, yep, that's true. Moving on. I mean, yeah, I I think you're kind of it's kind of situation with with audiences. You're damned if you do and damned if you don't, because if you if you do admit that, even if you make that sort of precursor, people are still gonna think that you're being unreasonable to an extent by not presenting um, the points that you do agree with in a way. But on the other hand, um, equally, it does does kind of create a bit of an inconsistency with the tone of the video. So I kind of I kind of accept, like in a way, the logic behind both points. But but I I I still I still kind of like feel that you know saying you know I agree with him on this was was a reasonable point of view at the time. Although 
I completely understand if if you feel differently. Um, you, I mean, you already sort of mentioned it, but like, uh, do you, I, I won't say anything. Like, what what is your sort of comment on the editing of the video? Like, what would you want to say? Yeah, it was the first time that I used multiple editors for one There's video. Nine, right? Yeah, nine. Did nine. Quentin or you do any editing? Um, no, I I little little fun fact is I've, I've never actually um done visual editing i always do audio editing um so that was a grueling task um mm. but but i've never done visual editing mainly because of a few things um firstly because university uh it's very time consuming and if i want to put out like long videos on a regular basis you know i have to have some help with that secondly i've lost my train of thoughts this is why i shouldn't look out the window randomly yeah editing um editing visual editing why do i do it secondly um it's something that i really don't enjoy um and that may tie into the third point um that i do actually have problems with visual processing and i have a tendency to zone out on a regular basis especially when dealing with visual cues um so there you go those are the three reasons why i'm not very keen on visual editing though i will i will be taking it up once i get some more time um because it's also, i've never I, come across it on youtube before you're the first person i've ever seen that has not only an editor like when you mm. went to the point where you hire hire a team for example like i know there's other people who do that but You've got multiple editors in one video, which to me is very strange because yeah. you just talked about tone like being important. Yeah, and as, obviously, as, as you say, it was it was a tonal mess. I mean, we've taken up some really like if you've, I mean, you watch my recent videos, um, Mola. Mm -hmm. Like I, I've taken up, we've taken a very clear like approach to how to the basics of editing. Like for me, um, I've spoken to a lot of people who watch my videos, and they say like a bit of like in like you don't want it to get too monotone um so they kind of like it when when there's a different different style as long as it's grounded in some fundamental appeal and some foundation there and so what we've tried to do is establish a very clear foundation and then give a few creative uh differences and say you know that's that's all right and um the feedback has improved with regards to like what people think of of how editors work together but the problem was with that video there was no foundation um and well, my video sorry well my video was the foundation wasn't it oh oh with regards to editing style yeah like um, how many cuts one would make or what format of yeah. of fonts yeah, and, and movements yeah yeah not to mention like it, i i do i see where you're coming from but like for example the one where you there was a there was about a five second uh part where you started your commentary while rags was still talking while there was relatively yeah. loud music and like you just yeah, couldn't hear what the, was happening the music was a was a mess um i i can uh, uh, say like i completely agree that the, and i got the feedback and and i i taken heed of that mm -hmm. and whenever i get a draft through now and the music seems too loud I'll, I'll i'll say back i'll say you know we need to we need to turn down the music a little and um i've completely like taken that on board music was a mess and there were a, there were some errors i mean many of them like still did a good job it was just the problem of combining so many different elements into this new video um into this new style it was it was bound to tonally be very inconsistent and i completely completely concur with the concerns voiced uh so that's sort of covered the more the, I, I ironically because this was gets discussed in the video that uh, i consider the sort of visuals to be superficial mm. compared to the writing in a film like quinton had a huge mm. problem with that uh but likewise in your video if the editing is bad and the music is bad and the whatever else, I, as long as the writing is on point, I would still be fine with it. Um, but I was going to ask you again, just your 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 opinion on this. Um, 
I I tend to I I know a couple of big words because I you know I've, I I like English and stuff. <laughs> but there are some words where I'll be like, oh, I better not use that. I actually recently re-recorded a line while I've been making my part one because I was like, I don't need to say that. That was a little bit mm -hmm. much. Um, I've only got the one because I, I I'm not trying to nail you down on this. I just want your perspective. So you said um on about one of the responses I uh rags had about everything. You said they were clearly perceptively anodyne statements. Anodyne. And it's the anodyne. kind of wow. I must have I must have been feeling I must have been feeling jacked up on my own ego <laughs> at that point. You must have yeah, very nineteenth century. I <laughs> genuinely we had to go look up what it means because I don't know what anodyne meant. I was like uh I could guess, but like wow. And perceptively anodyne. I was like I'm not even sure how much wow. often I use perceptively. Like I know what it means, but I, oh no, I use perceptively all the time. Admittedly, I do not use anodyne commonly, but I use perceptively a lot. Hmm. Um, I like I like the word perceptively, but anodyne, yeah. And uh, oh, yeah, wow, it's just the, there's, there was a couple of instances. Like the other one was when you mm. referenced that I had everything had completed his narrative tripling. It was a sort of like oh oh tripling is is a. Uh... Is like uh, well, it's not. It's, is, I'm not asking a, you to device. explain it. I'm asking what yeah. do you think about the idea that like, do, do you think that maybe you're using sort of terms and phrases that are just going to fly right over an audience? Maybe, maybe yeah. that's a that's. I mean, that's a fair point. What we've done now is when I sometimes use some more complex words, we we throw up a little definition on the screen. Mm. Um, we we're gonna what we're gonna do this time. Like, um, the only issue is sometimes we've done it and it's sometimes been too brief. So we'll try and keep it there for a bit. So if people want to pause it and read the definition, then that's that's good. And people say to me, they say, "Oh, I've learned a new word from your video today," and I'm like, "Well, I think that's a, I think that's a good thing overall. If I help expand people's vocabulary, well, let's do well, it." If, Do you wanna... if you make if you make them look it up, then they're not learning the word from you. Yeah, but I'm still inspiring them to learn. <laughs> He's a, learning it because of you in a way. Go to a dictionary. Yeah, I mean. They, they seem to. Uh, That's I what think we had to do. We I had would... to stop your video, and we had to go to Google, which which we misspelled mm. the word because no <laughs> one's used that word in two years. <laughs> and we were we were trying to find out the phrase, and that it does it does take away from what you're trying to say when yeah people of, either of have course. to yeah you know, when people have to pause to look it up, and if they don't look it up and they don't know, then they don't know what you're saying anyway. Of course, people don't seem to phase by the fact if they have to look it up. But equally, what we do now is we try and put the definition on the screen in case people are confused. Maybe I should put like a little uh, glossary at the at the end of my videos. Uh, maybe in the description. No, uh, no, it, it's as simple as saying if you want to if you want to use an adjective for like harmless, then yeah. you could say harmless or anodyne. Hmm. Because mm. like course, you know, if you were running a channel where you were like, the word of the day is anodyne, you explain what it means, then you're like, all right, guys, <laughs> on with the actual video. You know, that would be fine. But if you're trying, because do... the whole point is you're yeah. communicating an idea in your video, right? So it's like, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, like I do understand that, and um, we have tried to. It's for me, it's like a quirk in a way, that kind of I don't want to just be just delivering a narrative. I do want to have these things and. Um, even if like in a way some view it as impractical generally the reception I've got from it is positive but also I do understand that I could do it more efficiently which is what we try and do now we try and put the definition on screen if it's a bit more of a complex word um, which yeah I, I, I feel I feel kind of kind of helps and you know people kind of enjoy it I haven't received complaints about it so uh, obviously, just because I haven't received complaints isn't it doesn't mean it's not a problem. But on the other hand, um, generally, I, I I don't I personally don't view it too much as a problem. Even though I do accept that obviously there are efficient ways to yeah, to, to deal with it. It's not a big point. It was just something mm. that we noticed. I was going to say enough. we can we can now move on to the the big points. I know these are the ones that people wanted to hear. So. Uh, you know, uh, sure. let's get it out of the way. So, uh, the best, I'll give you an example to work with instead of just, uh, you know, some kind of accusation. But the idea is that me and Rags, what he means that we have like 90% of what we have to say is probably going to be more so about him in terms of grievances. Now, there's this bit that you you may remember where uh, I Hate Everything says that, you know, people hate porgs even though porgs are harmless. They don't even affect the plot. And Rags' response is that, uh, isn't it better if they did affect the plot as opposed to simply existing 
to make toys, you know, mm. be more meaningful. And and the example obviously is Ewoks, where Rags is like, yeah, Ewoks are better, and I hate everything's like, no, Ewoks are worse because they affect the plot. So your response is, well, I don't know what I hate everything would say about that, you know, and that's an interest that could be a conversation, but never mind. Then that's where that ends because that's as far as it can go. And then Quinton comes in and says he finds it interesting, and, and I had to rewatch it again to make sure I get the quote down. Um, he says that Rags is saying that a film is objectively without value if it sells toys. And then he says, like, how stupid does Rags have to be to not know that Star Wars has always sold toys, that movies have always sold toys? And it's the kind of thing where he goes on for, like, a good two minutes about his history with knowing about the toys and, and how we should have seen this. And this is just, it's like, it's got nothing to do with what Rags said. Okay, I need to think about this. And obviously, I guess the question comes yeah. down to, like, do you, did you see this when you were editing? Because you, you had a great response to Rags, and then you, would you not have seen Quinton's and been like, oh, that's not really what Rags was saying, though, Quinton? Yeah, like, I don't want to seem hyperbolic, but pretty much everything Quinton said was either a straw man or a non sequitur, or it was just some random tangent, or it was a flat-out lie. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me that. I'm just I'm just rereading the script currently. Um, because no, I mean, if you want my first response, no, it didn't jump out at me. Um, because uh, I didn't. Uh, okay, so it's like to clarify, so, Rags is cool with film selling toys. I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm fine with the <laughs> merchandise. Like I'm, and, and Quentin even went so far as to say, like the films. Like he mentioned capitalist, he said they weren't. Yeah, when they he are. said that you were like criticizing it for being capitalist when this is Star Wars, and it's like, I don't think. Okay, okay, I'm just trying to work out what the arguments uh, yielded from. Um, okay, so R Rax's point was that sure they were made to sell toys, but wouldn't it have been better if they were if they were also uh, to influence the plot? Mm -hmm. And Quinton says, so the idea of someone saying that the Star Wars film was quite objectively, supposedly morally worse because those... You can say it louder. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry, sorry. Sorry, I'm just, I was just reading to myself. Also, the idea of someone saying that the Star Wars film is, quote, objectively and supposedly morally worse because there are parts intended to sell toys. And that's not, um, as much as you've got the script there, that's not what he says in the video. No, he says objectively he without value, as if Rag said that. Did he say morally? I don't remember him saying. I, I, I don't know. This really? is this is just this is just the script. <laughs> so no, he may have, no, he I... may have like changed the wording in delivery. Yeah, he probably. So is did. that his script? That was his. That's what he wrote. Oh yeah, if that's what he gave you, that's not what he stuck to. Okay, Good fair job, enough. <laughs> okay, I'm not. <laughs> okay, so I guess. I guess it was, it was a, I guess he kind of reversed it. So essentially you were saying it would have been better if they'd influenced the flot. Um, and I guess he reversed it and said, well, because they don't influence the plot, you're implying that it's worse because of that. That would be how I, how I would interpret he, his, his arguments. He's, he said that I don't feel like a film can have any, value objectively if it sells merchandise yeah okay let me see if that he says that down the it's line. your video mate I'm, yeah, we can... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry and i'm happy to hold up my hands and say you know i should have vetted the narrative more tightly it's okay uh, well I'll, i can get yeah. you the timestamp and, and also another time. also the fact the fact that it, it happened you know yeah i get it I get months it. ago like mm -hmm. um and then obviously there's the one I I don't know. Did you check out the timestamps I gave you for the other one? Oh uh, no, I did not. Well, it's it's um, it's okay. I'll just literally like it, assuming you right. trust it's, me, I'll give you the context of all of it. I mean, I mean, you know, we we have the video. Playing. I mean, I I I can I can uh, give me a sec. Are you actually playing with audio? No, no, no it, it's fine. Like you don't need you, to. I'll so... I'll literally just give it yeah, to you. Yeah, no, it's, it's really I, simple. I turned, um, I turned. Yeah, I know. I turned. I turned the audio off so I'd be able to. Yeah, that's fine. Clear a discussion. Leave him muted. You're okay. Um, um, so the the three clips. The first one is um, Rags responding to "I hate everything." Who said the throne room is amazing? The whole fight's amazing. And Rags was like, uh, "They didn't even use the force in that fight." And then moves on to more criticisms of the throne room. And then we go to your video where um, Winton says mm -hmm. that Rags um, complains that uh, there's no for use of the force in the fight between Luke and Kylo. 
And then mm. um, he plays the clip of Rags saying, they don't even use the force in this fight. And then that's yeah. it. And um, I think I told you about this. Uh, like it's uh, Yeah, you, you did tell me about this. Quinton did actually mention this to me because um, he did. I think he watched part. Of, well, I know he watched part of the stream. Uh, he said it was a legitimate mistake, and therefore I don't know what else I can say about that. Like you can, you can judge that explanation for yourselves. I well, like, if you had said, you know, uh, my mistake, I'm happy to believe you. But like, I'm, I, I don't. I, have much respect for Quinton. I don't believe we don't believe Quinton you don't, he's I, a lying snake is what we're trying to say. I mean, you don't you don't have to believe him. I mean, generally my perspective is that um it would be su such a pointless thing to to lie about that I don't see why he would intentionally well, do that. Again, because like just an idea. Him. I think that maybe the editor was supposed to find a clip that represented that and Rags never said it, so they went with that one and they were like, out of context, that does sound like it could be referring to it, so that solves the problem. So it could be the editor. But then also Quinton goes mm -hmm. on a diatribe about how wrong yeah, Rags is for saying it did... when it's it's yeah. like he's got nothing nothing to jump off from. So it's like Quinton could have been like, use this clip, it's good enough. I don't uh, know. Um, it was the the. It wasn't. Quinton didn't have any influence uh, in the e editing. I thought you said he uh, made the process. mistake. Oh, oh. Um, yeah, he said to me he made a legitimate mistake. So maybe what happened was that he he wrongly said like watch that, and then the editor just, as you say, picked the clip to fit it. Um, I, I don't think he edited his own parts, I, as you said. So when he provided his clips... You know, uh, his... I, don't, I don't think he edited his own parts. I'm pretty certain because what happened was um, we had to edit his parts in with my parts and therefore the editor, the editors did that. Um, and but obviously, therefore, just to clarify, like, seems quite likely. Quinton had little moments where, say, like, he would say something, then a clip plays, he says something, and then he has his own... Would he not have provided some notes, like, I want you to play this clip here? Or was it literally just he gave you lines? And there's even no, a second I mean, line. He must, he must have specified snap. where he wanted his lines to play, right? Like, how else? I mean, I can, I can, I can link you the document and you'll see that... Uh, I, I can take whatever your word is. Like, it, like, what, I'm, what I'm saying can... is, if you told me to provide some commentary on a part of, let's say, the new Marvel film, and then I write out my thing and then I go, this is for this scene, and then you go, oh, okay. Mm. And then I'm like, play it after Iron Man says this, and then play the second part after you play a clip of blah, 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 saying this. Like, Quentin must have done that, right? Because otherwise his words won't have any context. No, um, because we were following pretty closely chronologically, I, mean, I, can, I can check. I think... And there is a section, too, where I can, I... snaps his fingers, and it's supposed to go to a clip of me saying something. So there was I'm, some kind of a... I'm going to have to ask the editors, because I legitimately don't remember. Um, this is this is very... this is. Uh, I'm probably still in touch with a few of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, what I'll do... I, I, I'm, I'm really confused now. I've confused myself, admittedly. Um, oh, and like how it was made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as, as said, like, I, I want to be clear that I wasn't happy with the production of the of the video and t well you know i was i mean i was happy in some ways but in the other way i accept that it is um inadequate in many of its production values and unfortunately that was kind of the output of just it being the first time i ventured into something like that mm -hmm. um, and i'm happy to hold up my hands on that behalf you know like if i say um god marvel movies suck and then you respond to that with every one of them really and i go okay i don't mean every one of them that's like a completely reasonable sort of uh progression of conversation the two examples i gave you the reason i gave you them was so they were so blatant like how did quentin do that by accident it's like literally someone saying something and then you just completely change it yeah yeah like, not even a I little mean, bit like I... rags you you responded to rags properly in the toy one and then quentin just went off on this insane rant that had nothing to do with what rags was saying yeah whenever he was on screen we just knew we were in for a ride to wherever like, me and Rags can't know for sure if he was either lying or if he was uh, just incompetent. But, I mean, the evidence doesn't look I'm, good for him. Let's just put it that I way. I mean, I, under, I understand, like, why, like, my, 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 my knowledge and, like, my experience with Quinton is that, personally, like, I don't think he would, he would lie about it simply because I don't think there was 
that much to gain from lying about it, particularly if you were, you were always going to make a response. And we always anticipated you were going to make a response. And we always knew that, you know, if that was something, that was a terrible thing to be caught out on. And so, yes, I, I don't think he would intentionally lie about it, mainly because I, mean, I just think it would be so easy to, 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 to pick it out. My, my, the reason I started my YouTube channel is that I cynically believe that a lot of YouTubers will just try and convince people of a narrative. Like, I'm trying mm -hmm. to dispel them as I respond to different things. I'm like, this is not true, by the way. I think Quinton was just like, ah, fuck it. Like, the, you've seen the comments on your video, right? Like, those people hate rags. Mm -hmm. And I think that that'll yeah. work just fine for Quinton. Who's going to care about the comments on one of the EFAP videos? Quinton can ignore that. Quinton commented on it. I showed you it. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't... think I think one of the things is that is that I do think that the saying like, oh, well, someone's been dishonest or they've manipulated something here. That's a reasonable point to go because then you're dealing with interpretations, and that becomes a lot more murky. Hmm. But him outwardly lying about something. I don't necessarily. Well, of course, you uh, can't confirm or deny. I don't. You know, you I, 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 you know, he said to me it was a mistake. Um, obviously, no, you're not under any obligation to believe that. And to be honest, like given given like the whole experience of of this back and forth, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. But from my point of view, I don't really think he would lie about that because it becomes I don't, I don't buy that I don't buy that about Quentin for one second well, I, entire, let me ask you this the like, entire video was him like every time he came on screen he would misrepresent or completely misunderstand or he would go off on some totally random point like practically mm -hmm. every time he was on the screen and this is the thing I understand he's your friend and he was obviously your guest and you promoted each other why would you ever want to say yeah he's he's lying but let me ask you this one question do yep. you think there's anyone on planet Earth that would recommend Quinton say, yes, I lied, you got me? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Nobody would With, recommend that. That's I, just I a bad I move to make. Un I completely understand that, that Quinton would never openly admit he lied. It was just, from my perspective, like, like thinking about it, um, I, I can't ever see him willingly lie because i think it's such a bad look and mm -hmm. i do understand to an extent your point of view that you know people people are almost driven by the predetermined ideology so they don't care if the person on their art argument side lies for me like i just don't think quinton quinton would do that with, with that perspective in mind i totally without a doubt think that he would and that's, and that's pretty much as far as we can go that's, and that's okay that's fine. like yeah because I, it, this wasn't like a one-time thing in this video. Again, like every time. Yeah, no, I I do understand like the points about manipulating and misrepresenting. And Quentin um, knows that when he says something, he'll get away with it for the most part, because the people who see it first will just run with it and they'll take his word for it and they'll go for it. Mm hmm. Yes, and, and that you um, know, I, I, I don't, I, yeah, and I don't. Once again, I don't disagree, but it's just there's a line where you go from kind of manipulating, misrepresenting, especially like because we were talking about this, um, this point, which was, uh, the merchandising, which you know you've you've raised a fairly like decent point about how he's misrepresented that point of also, view, and I, com I, just I completely to... understand. Get it out, because you, you know this very well, but like, uh, did I not ask many times to talk to Quinton personally before any of this happened? Oh yeah, but he's just, he's just not, he's not what, what I'm saying is like, just to confirm, I did give this a well, chance yeah, I mean, to be I, done, I mean, yeah, sorted course, privately. Like, I, can, I can give you, I can give you credit for that, but it doesn't, doesn't, yeah. I, I don't, I, I, yeah, people... You saw his I, comment, I, right, on the evening? Yeah, I saw, I saw his, I saw his yeah, comment. Yeah, he's a fucking but, asshole. <laughs> I think I think I I just I I think he doesn't like you very much. I get the he feeling. He doesn't. No, He's he does. Th asshole. This is what we're saying is that uh, he was motivated to make us look really as bad as he could. I mean, the thing Absolutely. the thing is, the thing is, that's that's why I don't think he would willingly lie, and um and I understand that that there is points against here like manipulating, misrepresenting, and I completely understand those. But the problem is like when you willingly lie, you completely open up yourself to it backfiring. And I just don't think he would have logically done that. What? Um, Why not? Because I, I don't think in his head, um, he would 
he would see it as actually beneficial to lie about something like that. No, I think logically, the point. there definitely would, would be a huge benefit it's, for him to lie. It's like I said, I'm, his fan base just, are going to get over it. They're not going to care because he can just say, oh, that's not what I meant. They've taken that out of context. I mean, oh, yeah, I completely understand that. But if we're talking about like specifically like with this one clip, then I, I think that could be a legitimate mistake I, I i do understand the problem is you have like lying about the facts and then lying about like what can what can be um concluded about the point and i don't think quinton would lie about the facts because i don't think that would be beneficial what you can do is like make these inductive fallacies where you say well because they've said this they must therefore believe this that's a, that's something that i do completely like take into account that Saul may may do but but I don't think he would he would lie about the the underlying fact because I don't think that would be beneficial. And I think um, it would be well, easy, I mean, at least uh, you said I think we, I think, he considers it a mistake. At least we've got that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he's he's not he's not saying you've you've taken it out of context. Um, he he says it's, it was a mistake. And, oh yeah, what um, I was saying is that he could. Um, it's almost like I could respond to your video and make you look like a five out of ten, or I could really really lie just just pieces and bobs here and there and involve some truth and make you look like a two out of ten and i yeah, think quinton took think, the latter option i i i think the thing is that that um that definitely there are there are ways that you could lie about someone with regards to what can be interpreted from what they said um and i do agree there generally my feeling is that i do not think he would have said like um will it like mindfully especially as it was a i mean that specific instance was a one-off um i i do legitimately believe that was an error on his behalf um well no i mean the sorry both one-offs the 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 two ones i gave you the two blatant ones that were the, like i mean the, the toy the toy one is like that's 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 different though because that's him li that's well that's that's him suggestively lying about um what Rags was trying to imply. Well, I'll, I'll just I'll just lay it out. What, what Rags, Rags says it's more meaningful for them to be important to the plot, and that's it. And then mm -hmm. Quinton extrapolates. How is a film with objectively without value if it sells toys? Like that's a that's yeah, that's, that's more than an inference. Yeah, yeah, there gets to a certain point when you're like you're just making shit up. Yeah, yeah, and I do I do understand that point of view, but it's when you come to the point about inference we can see that he's not like said like for example rags in the with, the, with regards to the other example rags has we're talking about this example i know i know but i'm trying to because you, you said comparatively um both of them and I'm, I'm happy to come back to that example but um but if we if we're back, like comparing the two um you've got one where he he says rags said this but Rags didn't. Yeah, on I the never other said hand, that once, or even implied it. Yeah. No, no, Quinton said that. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, and 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 that was regards to the throne room. Um, and then you have this one where it's like he said Rags has. Said oh, I this. thought you were talking about the other thing. Oh, I'm so. I'm so is it yeah. so? Yeah, so I think that's the I, level that we're to at. clarify. I think what you're saying is we can at least see how Quinton got to the toys uh, response, yeah. while the other one has just been invented. Yeah, and and that that was that's my point. I can, I, I, can... I agree with you in in theory, but like it would be like someone saying, "I own a car," and then I go, "He eats cars." It's like, well, it's still about cars. Yeah, but I, I still consider I, it I a mean, blatant lie I, I, because I, Rags didn't even come close is, to saying. Like, it. I mean, sh sure, sure. I but I for me, it's more like the logical line of this, and that's probably why I didn't really pick it up. It's it it, it read it read plausibly to me. Um, unlike the other one, which is just a direct contradiction of what happened. Um, and so I wouldn't necessarily like conflate the two. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I do not, I do not believe what, what he's, he's done, done here, obviously like that, you know, he's clearly willingly done that, but I do believe like the one where he said, Rags said this and Rags didn't actually say that, that one's, that one I probably would side with him and say it's a mistake. Well, I mean, you're not going to want to um, believe that he's like a piece of shit. Cause I mean, you wouldn't necessarily want to be friends with. That piece of shit. Like you've yeah. got reasons to assume he's yeah, a yeah. good guy. And of course, of course. If you if you wanna, if you know, if you wanna, I mean, it's not in every case of if you want to. I mean, you go and go go and hate go and hate him. Like like he, 
I think the feeling's mutual, but... Uh, oh, well, I mean, I have reason to hate him. He has no reason to hate me. I don't like a film. Get over it. And I know that's ironic, considering the whole reason the, all these videos started, but literally, like, why has he come so hard after me? And it's like, oh, it's because I ripped into I, The Last Jedi on my five-hour series. I, I, think, I think generally, um, if you want, like, the reason why, and it's just, it, I think it was because of his, his original Last Jedi video. Um, I think we've had this discussion before. Um, he, he, he just had such a, like, a... I think he got so frustrated with a lot of people's responses to that. And a lot of them, um, I, I, well, no, I, I know this, I know this. He, I think he just, he just like kind of like really got annoyed by people's responses to, to his yeah, video. People linking my video uh, to him, which and, and, and that has nothing to do with me. And, like, and, I, and I completely agree. I completely agree that once again, that's not, that shouldn't be on you necessarily. Um, and then what what happened was um, the 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 parody he did of you, um, which was a failure. And and he again he reasons for like, me to hate him, not vice versa. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, once again, from his perspective, like his parody was wasn't wasn't meant to like be malicious. You no, know, um, it was kind of. Taking the piss. I would love, I uh, like it, being as fair as I can right now, right? If I didn't know what I know, I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. But um, he put out a tweet just a few, like a week before he released that parody, saying that um, he's not interested in listening to a pseudo intellectual British man talk about Star Wars <laughs> for five hours. Now you could be like, that's a joke. Yeah. It's like, no, he's already doesn't like me. He's already shooting uh, me. Do you, you think it? Do you, do you think it's an accident that you're in here defending him on his behalf, and he he's doesn't not have the balls to do it himself? I mean. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna ask you straight up. I mean, oh, well, once again, once again, like, does? is that what but, a pal but, does? I mean, Qu Qu Quinton is just not interested in in the the whole. I mean, well, I say no, that. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm on, not gonna on... accept that. That's ridiculous no, that he's not no, interested in it. When no, he goes no, no. This... I just, yeah, he goes when he, he, yeah, when he, he goes to the trouble video, making the video. I do, I do understand that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and once again, like. I know. I'll Just... tell you what. I'll tell you what he's interested. He's interested in sniping from a safe place. Mm -hmm. That's why he's in your video. That's why he's on Twitter. That's why he won't. Well, yeah, I gotta admit, Tiaro, I think he's in your video as opposed to making his own because he felt like that was a good vantage point to shoot from. Absolutely, because he knew that you would take the majority of the flack for it, which is why you're which in here. Arguably, is what's happening right now. Which, again, like I said, well, yeah, I'm, I, I have again, a like, lot of respect I, for you I'll, I'll, for being I'll, here. By I'll the way, take, I'll take I'll take the flack and. No, um, no, you're not. You're not taking the flag. Like we're not blaming you for him. He's yeah. he. You're you're his scapegoat essentially. Yeah, I mean, the way he, the he's reason, using you, mate. I mean, which but that's the thing. Like we're just kind of doing our own things that now. Is the thing, and, and that's what the problem is. I that's mean, the, the thing. The the thing is, like to me, I I don't really. I, 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 look at me, sir. Let me clear up my thoughts, and mm -hmm. I'll try and lay it out. Like as because because right. I'm getting carried away. Um, point of being was like at the time, Quinton um, was was a fairly was a fairly um, sizable channel, mm -hmm. um, and someone who I I I was on good terms with, always been very friendly to me. Um, I understand, not not the same experience with everyone. Um, he wanted to come my video, and he he, he stated his intention. And you're completely you're completely right on this behalf. Um, that that he he kind he wanted to he kind of wanted to do it on my video because um, because he he didn't necessarily like really want to have to deal with it on his channel. Mm -hmm. And and I I and I completely admit that uh, at the time it was a mutually beneficial thing um, because because you know it was a collaboration between someone I like and someone I still you know I I still like. Um, and, and it was, it was something that I wanted to do at the time. And to him, it was a, a cathartic moment because he, he clearly had a lot that, that he wanted to say on the topic. And even though some of that stuff is definitely very questionable and I, without a doubt, understand that, um, he, he was kind of vexed, I think by how the situation had transpired and i'm not here to necessarily say like you're you're wrong about 
the points of view. But at the, the same time, I also want to say, like, it was beneficial for me um, in many ways. Uh, and from my point of view at the time, it seemed beneficial to me. And I understand that looking at this current scenario, I'm sat in a call um, with you um, and I'm defending Quinton on this point of view. I completely understand that given the fact that he doesn't, he doesn't seem, doesn't seem to want to talk to you, definitely a point of criticism towards him, considering he has commented on your videos and that, and what I said to Mula before before he did comment on your videos, I said Quinton has kind of moved on. And that kind of got contradicted by the fact that he, <laughs> he engaged himself again. Yes. And you know, and and I I just I I, I don't know. It, you're right, man. You're right. Those, Look, uh, to, I, I, to wind I, I, it back down, he what we're saying is everything from your end probably looked ship shape. But um, there's a, there was a lot of stuff Definitely. going on that he wasn't Definitely. very candid about. I, 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 I understand that. I understand that. Um, and he's just, um, I it just that whole thing just was just a spiral. Um, and I think I think it was. I think the moment, the really like the thing that the the. Um, that kind of pushed it past the point of no return was when he posted the video, and I, I, I accept that he pre made made that tweet, um, but chances are he made that tweet on a whim. Absolutely, um, I'm, uh, my only point and, was and that he, was probably, he threw he the first set of off. stones that were against yeah. you because you said like it's just a parody that wasn't even meant to be directed at you. It's like, oh, it was. He has a huge problem with it. Was, me it, from it, the was, it was definitely, it was definitely, it was definitely directed at you. Like, there's no doubt about it. Um, and and like for the record, I offered many times to talk to him, and he said the main reason is that I don't understand what objective means. Which do you agree with that? After all the conversations we've had about it. We've had a lot of conversation about what is objective. Hmm. I, I mean, it's one of those one of those things. I um, uh, objective is is different to objective value, and we I sure. I I think I think that I think that's that's. Well, see, if someone to... said objective means elephant toes, I'd be like, I'll still talk to you. I just want to see how you got there, and then we can see what about. Yeah, yeah. You know, but he, he was I just mean... like, nope, you don't understand the words, so bye. It's like, oh, that's very open of you. Yeah. And you know, I, you could be like, well, why do you, why do you care more? And it's like, well, he's openly criticizing me. And I'm like, okay, let's have a chat. And he's like, nope, you don't understand words. Yeah, and... And that's just the beginning, before we got to this video, which is just like, Quinton gives me no reason to think that he's nothing but reprehensible with how he treats me. And rags, obviously. Hmm. And you right, don't, you don't yeah, have to, you, um, to drag me into it. That's, that's fine. <laughs> you, you don't have to say anything to try and make it better for him. We're, we're, we're literally just saying, like, I, uh, yeah, I, you're, you're fine. Um, I mean, there is I'm just... a question that I think people would be love to hear your answer to, which would be, um, so considering some of the stuff we brought up, and as long as there's at least one thing that you're like, okay, yeah, that's not very uh, accurate. Um, sure, sure. What would like, you that, say that is it's not accurate? What would you say is your capacity uh, for responsibility as the creator of the video that he is in? I platformed him. I definitely platformed him on that behalf and 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 promoted his part. And without a doubt, um, I share some of that responsibility. Uh, I don't... I kind of... The problem was that it is it is my video and therefore you know i have to take some of the flag equally like you know he said what he said um and my position from it was a position of ignorance in a way and should i have known better without a doubt sure i should have looked into into more of the details um i was kind of like not an expert on on Star Wars, and I was like, um, and that's why that's why I call that's why I said, Quinton, can you come in and help me with um, the the more Star Wars focused points? Um, because that's 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 what I I felt like I I wasn't an expert on, and I didn't want to 
just read a you know read a few star wars wiki articles and pretend that i actually have an investment in it i wanted someone who 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 knew a lot more than i did and you know quentin clearly clearly cares a lot about the star wars franchise regardless like of what he said and so yeah i take i stake responsibility from the basis that i platformed him uh i didn't i wasn't um i wasn't uh meticulous enough with the points um and also and also the fact that you know i was i i clearly should have known better uh with regards to what was being said i kind of just went with it um and and put my faith in him and i did put my faith in him. no i i i quinton has done a lot for me as a as a friend as someone i've worked with and i think really the thing it comes down to is that um, he's also he also really likes I hate everything as well. Mm-hmm. That's another really important point to take in mind. I think he just kind of got very um, very annoyed over the response to to it, and and it just kind of spiraled for him. And and you know that's that's that and whether that leads to like this then that's fair enough like that's that's what i have to say about it um so in relation what does it mean to say that you are responsible like um what does that mean to you well i mean what does it mean to me what what would you so you clarify that? uh if i was again because we're different people and me and you and rags yeah. are all different people if i was in your position there's probably a few actions i would consider taking um for example, at the end of the conversation I had with I Hate Everything and Wolf, me and Wolf asked if I Hate Everything would tweet out clarification, as in, like, he spoke to us and that The Last mm-hmm. Jedi isn't as good as he thought and that his video was a bit of a mess and all this stuff, and, like, he was just like, mm, don't really want to do that. And we were like, okay. You know, that's completely down to the person, so is yeah. there any action you want to take? For example, and I'm literally just throwing out ideas. You can be like, why in the world would I do that? But, like, do you feel that maybe it's with sort of apology in any way shape or form because hmm. obviously you could argue that doesn't rags owe an apology to i hate everything it's like well that conversation yeah, never I mean, took place like, i mean it's like it's it's one it's one of those things it's like i think what what kind of riled me and like quinton to, to up about this and we watched because we watched the video and Rags' video, and we, we felt very strongly, particularly about like the character inferences, and and we we felt very strongly about what Rags said, and then it became a tit for tat, and that that wasn't the right way to go about it, without a doubt. And uh, as as a video goes, you know, um, I I I, re- I regret the quality not not being better. I regret not wording my points better um and equally like i'm happy to hold my hands up and say you know i could have i could have done better um i don't really necessarily see the point of 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 kind of tweeting tweeting no, no, i'm not asking you either. anything specifically oh, yeah. i'm I asking mean, what you I, think I, I, but but like what would i what would i say like taking responsibility is it's like it's a difficult one because you know for me like at the time i felt like what what rags that rags Jack said about i hate everything was like was like the thing that drove me to have a response mm-hmm. and i don't expect rags to apologize for anything he said at all because it is interpretive and well I, I, so i don't mean to cut you off but i just want to provide some context here like rags and i hate everything have never had their conversation nor has rags yeah, of, of had course. any reason to assume that he should he's say for example if someone said rags you've clearly uh done present rags with something that we present we could present quinton with i think rags would say yeah my bad sorry for that point i didn't mean to misrepresent you and oh so, yeah and I'm, i'd happily like apologize for like things that that that, that i've 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 said wrong and and it, the problem is it's hard for me to like like it's hard for me to apologize on someone else's behalf 
like like because because that i think that i i don't think that really achieves much i think i can say sorry for what i've done um with regards to oh, it i'm sure that that would, that would mean a lot there and and obviously like any anything that i wasn't clear enough anything that i failed to vet clearly on other people's parts in the videos that has led to misinterpretations um that could have been better i am sorry and and i i wanted to avoid that as much as i could with my video and it's clear that i could have done it better on many fronts and and i i've worked to improve myself and my content since then and and obviously um Obviously, there are like parts, like there are points that I'm happy with, and there are parts that are you. I don't watch your stream yet. I, there are parts, probably points that you probably watched it and thought, you know, that's a fair point. And well, I mean, uh, we we would maybe respond to a line of dialogue and then play, and we realize it was contextually different. We'd say, oh, whoops, my bad. Like we didn't realize that's what they were saying. Yeah, and 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 that's fair enough. And the main problem that I ever obviously it wasn't scripted though. That's why that would main, happen. The main problem that I ever took with Rangsy's video was 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 the tone. Um, that I I felt um, had led to a lot of excessive negative reception to I hate everything that could have been avoided, and that's the problem that I'll always probably have with it. Because the because, the dynamic you could say unfortunately because, uh, yeah. is that it's it's sort of you and Rags, me and Quinton, because Quinton has more things to say about my video than Rags's video. Yeah. Because of the uh, nature of how Star Wars works, so this I was going to say, like this is more for Rags to respond to than me right now. What you're saying, yeah, and that's fine. Rags, you can, Rags can interject when he wishes, and and for me it was like as someone who knew I ate everything, and and someone who 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 knew what what um like for me it's the worst like benefit of of the doubt in a way. Um, I don't think I hate everything gave you enough uh, to make such character inferences and 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 certain phrases. And I get it's part of the persona now. I do understand that, and I should have taken that more into account. But no, it... I don't really have a persona in any way that isn't just aesthetic. That's fair enough. Then, then in that, then in that instance, like I, I just, I just felt. Um, like you if you were, were to ask me right now what I thought about I had everything, I mean I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't think like negatively of him for the video. Mm. As I as I've told Mahler in the past, um, the biggest thing that I have a problem with I hate everything is how he handled your conversation with Wolf and Mahler and then how he flipped on it when he was speaking in public. I mean, yeah, I, to be honest, I just I believe he just kind of I think the thing was I he said, cocked. like, he, sorry, it, it, he cocked. <laughs> he cocked. <laughs> I, I, he, I think the the issue is, and this was what what I what I said earlier, the fact that it was done at a, at a, at a stupidly late time, and um, I hate everything. Um, got himself into a position where he was just like, kind of going with it, just uh, just because he wanted to get to bed. I understand. Um, it's just that, but he, yeah. he did literally say at one point he to did, me and Wolf and he should, that um, he should, he should, he's never you know, heard it, such strong arguments it, about the film before. And we were like, "Oh wow, thanks." Uh, and and honestly, um, if if you want my point of view, um, I think he regrets more saying saying that in the first place um, because I think he kind of understood that that wasn't exactly how he felt, not because you, he was necessarily wrong, but because he, he was just kind of going off some basic, like going with it, um, to kind of appease you and, and in, in the given context, um, that, that's what I would say, um, is his biggest regret, um, and obviously, it's important for people to say their feelings. And obviously, it's important to have that discussion and to actually have a clear conclusion. And I would love but, for Rags and I had everything to be able to discuss that, but I don't, th I don't oh, know that that's going to happen mean, either. Yeah, I'm sure, that that would be fine, but I think that people might be overplaying how I, exactly I feel about I, I Hate Everything, especially from the video. Like, the video was just like a thing that I, I did and I made it and I put it out and I didn't really 
give much thought to I hate everything after that. Like, especially even going into it. Well, you, you didn't intend to respond it. to this video at first, right? You were sort of just like, your video was, there was nothing really wrong with this. There's no reason to. But then we sort of looked into it and we were like, this, this is worth responding to. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's fair enough. I don't, I don't blame you for responding to it. Um, really, I think the problem was that it was that the video was presented in a way that that people like as i said i i completely understand there are people who, who watched my video and made uh, and i probably gave too much credence to unfair character inferences about you regs equally like i'll hold up my hands and say that um on the other hand like that was kind of the reason why i made the video um in the first place because what i felt was that you were giving people far too much ammunition to make unfair character inferences about i hate everything inferences like what uh, once again i i don't have the <laughs> we i mean we can rewatch the video um, but it would it just be stuff <laughs> like rag says oh he's, he's clearly uh biasly defending I mean, it so, or trying to make the I mean, criticism look just... more crazy than it is i mean yeah like i i i kind of i kind of felt that given given like um given how like mild like i felt i hate everything's video was um i felt the the it was the reaction was disproportionate and and, the thing in the scenario and, and that's and the, that's what i that's what i felt in the scenario that uh we had i hate everything watching rags's video live and then he picked out a couple of timestamps he sent them to well rags and then rags was like oh and then they had a conversation and then rags could would then have the capacity to be able to i don't know account for responsibility or apologize or whatever but obviously none of that's happened for rags so we can't do anything about it as far as he knows i mean it's been relatively mm. fair i mean i i personally disagree but once again i'm not i hate everything i can't i can't like speak on behalf of him like the, i mean this is the thing like having me here is mainly to speak about my video yeah because it's my video well, that's, and, that's that's why I'm trying to veer off it because there's not much we can do with uh, the... like, like there's not much we can do about it. But 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 if you want to if you want to know like like the, the I I personally feel the way you the way you handled the the uh, I hate everything video that was the reason why I made the video not necessarily because of of the like outward message. Um, it was just because I felt like it was it was leading far too many people giving far too many people to make harsh character inferences. And I mean, I spoke to I hate everything about it um, when you made the response, and it was, and I think he, I think he said, um, you know, he's he's never never received such a a significant amount of hate from it. And once again, hate is not necessarily on anyone, but equally, I, I like people who've gone and said like gone and said to to someone like. Oh, you're 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 a cunt and watch because they watch one of my videos. Like I don't necessarily have responsibility for them. Just mm -hmm. like people watching your videos and going over to Quinton and it's like they don't have like um, like well, I wouldn't hold you. I wouldn't hold you to account for that. Well, like, the only um, addendum I would have for that is like yes, it, like say for example, I have no reference to Quinton. Then people go up to Quinton and say you're an asshole. I'd be like, what are you doing? However, if Quinton says stuff like. Oh yeah, no, no, you no, know, yeah, of course. I, I we're talking about we're talking about right back at the start here. Well, yeah, but like, I don't think because yeah. I saw Rags' video, I don't remember th giving the impression that Rag Rags would have said things that would have made people go, "I'm going after I hate everything now," as opposed well, to. Well, I mean, that's that's how I that's how I that's well, how course, I felt when I watched it. But and and that's the thing. It's all about it's all about interpretation. Like I felt at the time, um, it was it was unreasonably harsh, and and I hate everything still feels that way. And once again, if you can get get him into a conversation then yeah, well, you, but the, I feel like he wants to kind of move forward and and equally I feel like we want to move forward from this absolutely well, uh, I, I had and then your video came out well I, yeah but that's one of the things it's like it's like it's all about getting the final word in and, well, I think this this works way better as a final and, word and than this, another this, response this, sort this of thing is, this, is, this is this is better than 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 anything like I think like it's gonna be said because equally when when someone responds they 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 have the final word and then people go to there and then when you respond you have the final word people go here um that's why i wanted to get into this conversation and just discuss the differences and once again that's that was the reason and I'm, oh yeah so I'm, just I'm, to clarify though right so let's say on the scale uh, you felt that rags did x out of 10 in terms of a bad move mm. against I hate everything, like I'm assuming you'd agree what Quinton did back is like more than double as bad. 
Yeah. I mean, like once that's... again, I think I think the problem I think the problem is, is like said with, with reading re- reading Quinton's part was that um, was that uh, he he he's kind of he's kind of t- m- misrepresented points in a way. I think it's strange that he would give you something that was his script and then he would deviate it from it in such a substantial way. Yeah, once again I uh mm. I, I I if you if you want to read the script after the stream then you're no, more No, I, I believe you. I believe Yeah, you. yeah. to be honest Especially like if, we're happy to um friend sort this out with just you. you like we got nothing to do like quentin has made it clear that he, he, want, he doesn't want to settle bad blood between us so we'll just let him fester let him do what he wants like we don't need to clarify what quentin's intentions even are we've just seen the effect and the let's just say clear misunderstandings that could be interpreted as something far more malicious but again like i would just rather focus on you because you're willing to actually speak to me um which again much respect for and uh i suppose to sort of just just to Push us a little bit further forward. Um, are you ha- are you happy with with uh, what we've discussed, both Rags and Tiaro, about this sort of trying to get it sorted? Oh, I'm fine. I mean, yeah, it's fine. I'm I'm totally <laughs> <satisfied> <laughs> sounded bad. so like depressed. Are you, are you? Yeah, okay? I'm just I'm just it's it's all, it's, it's mm-hmm. like here here here's one thing though that I will say I I won't and, and this was part of the part of the problem I had with I hate everything's video is there are some things that bug me that I hate to see, especially nowadays. And one thing that will uh, that will get a reaction out of me are people who make certain statements while trying to assume a position of weakness or victimization. Uh, people mm-hmm. who will say, who, pe- people who go boo-hoo, woe is me, also, you know, da 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 about other people. Mm-hmm. And that's, that, that's not something that I'll let slide. Mm-hmm. No, oh, oh, sorry. I'm just. I once again, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. I'm. I'm it's just. It is tiring. It's. It's like I'm not. I'm not like. I'm. I'm. I am just tired. Like, all right. I, I mean, this is all right. Like, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not asking for sympathy. And to be honest, I don't expect to get any. No, no, um, not you. Not this, that wasn't about you. Oh, sorry. I'm. I'm just. Oh, uh, I mean, there. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I completely understand that point of view. Uh, what can what yeah. can you say <laughs> it's like i i do agree like you can't overuse it i i think there i think it's just a case like i i would love to hear the context behind that sort of stuff and um mm-hmm. and i would probably judge it on an individual basis yeah i mean you know i i really have nothing else to say on this because you've pretty much said everything i would i would hope for you to have said um that yeah. there, there are recognizable flaws and that you'd like to sort of sort them out in future and that we all make mistakes. I, I already know there are, there are going to be time like I'm going to get more responses as time goes on and there's going to be someone who points out a huge like hypocrisy set of statements I've made and I'll, the best thing you can do is, is how you respond to it, right? Like, And I think you've done really, really, uh, real, you've done very respectably and I, I can always respect that you want to uh, defend your friends as well. I, I'm, I'm sure you could have had hours of really great like connection and the his experience to us is, is far different to yours. So yeah, I think one of the takeaways would be that from your video, there is a huge outpouring of hatred for me. And yeah. I'm, I'm used to, I'm fine with it. It's like that. That's part of the game that we play here. Well, it was a weird yeah, one, but it is what it is. Where there was one that was a like, I want to punch rags. That was at yeah. like 20 votes, which a is like weird. Ate my guts. That's, that's fine. That's fine. And, Oh, okay. Once again, like I wouldn't say that's fine. <laughs> um, I mean, no, no, no. Sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm not, not using the fine as an affirmative. I'm using it as like, an, I'm accepting your, your point of view. Okay. Um, it's like I made the video. My video was kind of done with, with the right intentions. Um, and unfortunately, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And there were clearly mistakes where I could have alleviated some of the hatred. Equally, um, that was kind of the reason why I felt uh, I wanted to make the video in the first place because um, I'd seen some quite <laughs> interesting comments made against I Hate Everything on the mm. basis of, of his video. And it kind of, and, and given the tone of the video of, of Rags, this is video, I, 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 I kind of understood, I kind of saw how, how it could have, how one could have led to the other. And equally, I should have probably maybe focused more in on, on that. And, and, I 
understand the 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 once again there were things that said in my video the the kind of that kind of made it just as just as bad um and even worse okay, and um, i'll, I'll happily happily hold, hold, hold my hands up on that but on the other hand like i i still i still do take significant issue with the delivery of the video but that's that's like not something that that can necessarily be resolved me uh so this is just one more one more thing i'll get out then which is that uh you you know my content well enough to know that the biggest thing that people will use against me is going to be you know, Mauler is an elitist who thinks that uh, the whole objective thing is just a smokescreen. He uses it to argue that his opinions are definitive while everyone else's aren't valid. Like, that's the the typical response I'll get from many people, which is fine, because, like, how could I not? That's, that's a very... Yeah. It's a very good um, start to try and wedge a criticism into my work, because it's like, oh, yeah, he does say objective. That's probably true. Um, so someone like Quinton, I would expect to make that video, and I would just be like, yeah, well, I can just cr discredit that. But, like, the unfortunate thing is people were making those comments with very high upvotes, and I don't even blame them because Quinton says as much in your video, and it's just like, damn it, that comes from TRO, who I actually really like. <laughs> like, and that's my, my unfortunate position, because it's just like, that video will serve to uh, be a lightning rod for people who hate my work. They'll go there, and then they'll be like, yeah, Mauler is a piece of shit who thinks blah, 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 blah. And again, I'm not saying, therefore, you need to do X, Y, Z. All I would say is, like, maybe throw a word in somewhere in some video, some even a Q&A, maybe. It would be it would be cool, like just so that there's something referenceable. Obviously, this this video could work as a referenceable thing. It would just be it would be awesome if you said that. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily um, do that in my analysis. I stuff. I I mean I had a Q and A. I kind of didn't quite touch on that. Um, I was going to make a, a, a follow up video where I cover some of my more controversial videos. That one being one of them, and. I'll probably say a bit point, more than I heard at one point you were considering taking your video down. Yeah, no, what happened was I just, I, I was in a really bad mood that morning. Um, and someone, you know, someone messaged me about, about some stuff. And I was just like, you know, fuck that. Um, and then I can consider it. And then, and then I was like, no, I won't. Um, it was, it was quite, it was, it was more, uh, it was one of those things that kind of done, it was reactionary. Um, and yes, I was, I was actually going to do a follow up where I clarified the points I made. Um, because it was clear that there were things that, that were said that, that didn't come across the way I wanted them to. Um, and I've, I had been planning that for, I, I had planned that probably even to do before your stream came out, but, um, but it's, there were just a few too many other topics that I wanted to cover first. Um, so, yeah, that'll probably be when it's covered. I'm not, there's nothing that I can really like put into the space of a tweet that would summarize my thoughts on that video, on my own video. Um, but without a doubt, there are things that I could do better and I'll probably address them in the future. Yeah, literally, I wouldn't even be asking this if not for the fact that I'm just, I like you and I'm friends with you. And so it would just be like, it would be so good if it would stop being used typically without any reason, stronger reason, because this is the thing, you don't say it, it's not you saying it, it's just the guy in your video who says it, so people use your video to do it, and so uh, it, it would just be awesome if there was some kind of, just by yeah, the way, uh, this of, is... of course, of course, and, and I'll, I'll clarify that, and I'll definitely, um, I'll definitely make sure that it's addressed, sure, without that's... a doubt, and... I... And I, I, I have been kind of waiting on it. I thought I'd get the stream out of the way first before we, we do that, um, mm -hmm. just so I can get some clarity on feelings from people. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. Um, well, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll say what I've got for closing, then obviously Rags could as well if he wants to, but uh, I just have a lot of respect for you to come on because it's, it's not easy, especially with... Two, not only a two against one, but you're also uh, at a disadvantage because you haven't seen all of your video recently, nor have you seen responses recently. Yeah. And you're having to defend potentially two other people, one who really is bloody hard to defend. Like, you've got not much to work with. So, again, thank you for coming on. And, um, of course, I, I'm pretty sure me and you will be friends for a long time with ease just because of the way you, uh, you comport yourself. If that's the correct word, oh, I'd have to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, and if there's any impression otherwise, um, I don't really know anything about you. I'm pretty neutral towards you. I don't like hate you or dislike you or anything. Okay.
Excellent. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, that's 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 great. I'll take that as a win. And so from there, would you guys like to check out a different video to sort of, uh, I, I'd say, bring this down a bit instead of being more so about a potential drama? You know what I mean? Well, sure. Yeah, sure, sure. So we'll that would check mean... out this Vox nonsense. And I just accidentally made it, so now I can't see any of the super chats. Yay! Is there a way to get that back up? Do you guys know if there is a way? I accidentally refreshed the page, so to get well on your on your stream page, yeah, you know, on like your stream info page at the bottom, there should be a list of the super chats. Yeah, that's that where they get. were, and then I refreshed, and now it's blank. So, <laughs> huh? It's um, like... then it should be, um, it'll be on your, it'll be on like a community tab or a channel tab, but it'll have. Um, it, it does keep all your super chats there. Let me actually go and click and see if I can find it. If you go to my channel, then go to... No, don't go to... Oh, community channel. super chat. I think I can Hold see on. it. Yeah, something like that. There should there should be an option there. Maybe Excellent. I can see what I assume is... The, oh, wait. October 17th. That's not what I'm looking for. 26th? Does it go up? Yes, it does. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, uh, if either of you want to go to the toilet or do anything, I'm going to try and get through these quickly because people have obviously been saying things and we've been an hour and a half in, so I'm going to try and... I'm going to use the loo. Very well. Um, you see, some of these, I read them and then I'm just like, what was the context? It says, slap my hand, friends. It's like, very well. No. Nah. On board. <laughs> Um, another recommendation for Rags and Wolf, tell him I said hi, is Gundam Thunderbolt. Both films are on Gundam Info. There's been a lot of Gundam recommendations. I hope that people go with them, but obviously when, I'll say it, like, honestly now, when people recommend things, you, as a as a creator, you'll probably at best put it in a list, but you'll have so many recommendations that it's, uh, uh tough to get through. Um, I'm watching you, EFAP. Beautiful. Good to see you all being friends. That That is the, the hope and goal, and I genuinely like think if time was rewound all the way to the point where I had everything was about to make his video, I think everything would have gone differently with how everybody's done everything now. Um, mm. Which is arguably yeah. very interesting. Uh, Metal Gear Solid is a better movie than The Last Jedi. It's fair enough. <laughs> Respect for TRO for being chill and debating. I... Agree wholeheartedly. Spider-Man 3 is a better movie than The Last Jedi. Am I going to get a lot of those? <laughs> I'm going to miss the stream, but you bet I'll watch the archive. Hope it's a good conversation. TRO is a pretty cool dude. Excellent. Uh, good job, TRO. Glad you're having a calm and eventful debate with Rags. Mauler much better than some guy I know. Oh yeah, Major Lee, who uh, doesn't like me as well. I have a lot of enemies. I think I've told you about this. Um... Ray Starkiller, my own theory for episode 9. It's a fair one. Pulp Fiction is better than Star <laughs> GTA San Andreas is better than Last Jedi. Uh, here be $5, don't use it all in one place, guys. Yes. Hi, TRO. What does narrative tripling mean? And uh... Oh, a nar narrative tripling. Like, uh, tripling, I used it, if I recall, in the context of, like, a really good example is the good, the bad, and the ugly. I think that's uh, what it means. I'm not... I'm a bit bit off bit off the game now. I've kind of switched off slightly, but um, but tr that's that's what I probably used it in the context tripling. Mm -hmm. It's quite a common thing because it it's like gives it more power in the moment. It's like because we googled done, it, we couldn't done. find anything for narrative tripling. Oh oh well, that's probably because I put narrative for it, which was a stupid thing to say. But tripling, that's if I think you could probably like uh, it's tripling or power of three. Um, that's that's like the rule of three or something it. like that as well. Like I I t yeah. I know what you mean. Like three is often yeah, it's like effective. It's, you know, gives 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 it more. It's not too much. It's not too little. Just kind of the right amount for your brain to. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's it's it's, it's a popular rhetorical device. And then the follow up was uh, Mullen Rags. I'm gonna fanboy. Stoked for more content from you, Rags. Can't wait for that epic TFA review. Do you wanna do you wanna say uh, any comment about upcoming content, Rags? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we'll give you a second. Uh, Tiaro, it would be an honor if you would join us. Do you do you know that reference? Uh. And this, folks, is why he had to bring someone in for Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not. I'm not an expert. Uh, Nick was asking, "What are you studying?" I'm studying politics, philosophy, and international law with a minor in psychology. <laughs> You uh, interested in becoming Superman? Is that the uh, overall goal? Or... Uh, <laughs> oh God, I'm interested. Uh, not doing nothing with my life, I guess. I want to do something. 
um and not not just be like a, have a have a normal life i'm a i'm i want to want to leave an impact in a way and uh that requires taking some risks and learning some from some mistakes mm -hmm. beautiful <laughs> wonderful um favorite tracks from star wars also prayers for john williams um well, oh, Tiero yeah. can't answer that question because I don't know if you know the. Well, do you? Do you? Do you want to answer that question? What? Which one? Favorite track from Star Wars? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I do not know their specific names. Oh dear. I mean, um, but but the title track is pretty iconic. I mean, you can't really. Absolutely. Like... I was gonna say like, there's so many tracks I love, but Duel of the Fates would probably be the the one I pick. It's just so epic. Um. Uh, Dear Moller, I have a playlist named Two Moller and Wolf with Love from a Fan, which is full of TLG videos explaining world building, and I was hoping you could rip them apart in a stream as well. We've got more than 30 videos in our backlog, and it keeps growing because we only cover one per stream. We get like five per week, so <laughs> it's like eventually we're not going to have uh, be able to respond. We just What we try and do is sort of um, bring on guests and then try and tackle a video that sort of matches them at least a little bit, or something that's recently relevant, I suppose, would be interesting too. So, uh, we will do our best to possibly um, approach some of the ones in that playlist. Uh, keep up the great work. Thank you very much. I love your content. Looking forward to episode 9 rant. It, it is coming. <laughs> um, Mola should do a 5-hour crucifixion logical surgery. Well, I mean, there's no need. We've uh, we've pretty much talked through it now, so it's all good. It only takes a few seconds for a septic pump to spray shit everywhere, but it takes days to clean it up. You're doing the best to clean it up now. I am... Um, I think I make an analogy for that in the new in the new thing. You know the whole idea that it's like you shouldn't. What was your take on that, Tiro? That you shouldn't take longer than the content to talk about the content. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's yeah. good enough for me. I already know what you think. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we've learned from experience. Just the, uh, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a bit of a that's like you know, if there's a lot to say, you just got to say it. And honestly. Sometimes it pays to say more because because then you know it can't be misinterpreted. Yeah, and that's why I try and that, and, and I think that's what what we what we both try and do now, like even more so now. It's well, like, um, I'm not have, sure if you have to sometimes. Sorry, you go. I'm not sure if Rags is actually there, but literally the, the thing we said we came from away from watching the this video over the two streams was the uh, in future we're both going to try and be more explicit with our language and see if uh, definitely and solve some more problems I, I've learned a lot too I have to like even now like I'll be like oh what if someone thinks I was saying that and although I've I've kind of like created a little logical arc for it where there's like there are always going to there are always going to be people who take what you say out of context there are always going to be people who, mm -hmm. who do that and you, you cannot account for them on and they will, they will, they will, they will do it, regardless. There's still like a, there's still like a certain way to deliver the information that's going to get like the reasonable people on board and listening. And that's kind of what I, I'm trying to do. That I'm just trying to get the the main echelon of of people who who aren't going to listen because I do believe the majority of people are reasonable. And well, it's it's a good thing to I'm believe. It's now. a positive thing to believe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's 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 I it's what I try and reflect in my content, and so I I kind of want to just encapsulate that set of people, and and um, I'm having a <sighs> tired day. It's um, okay. It, it's just one of those days. It's one of those days. We'll work through it. Um, and and if there are people. People are always going to talk. People are always going to look for reasons to to misinterpret you, uh, misuse your content as well. Um, you that that is unavoidable. What you have to do is make it as clear as day, make it as clear as possible that it's not going to be taken out of context. And you know, just do everything, all yeah. the safeguards. Absolutely, that, I'd, safeguards. I'd say that's a fair lesson for everybody. Who's making content is it's it's just gonna help you in the long run. It really will. Um, Better to be too thorough than not thorough enough. I mean, yeah, me and Rags I definitely am. think that way, but I know that <laughs> a lot of people will be like, anything over ten minutes is too long. And they're wrong. We hate them. They're the worst. 
Anyway, uh, show him the love of the Jared, the way of the Jared. Love you guys, of course, James, and thank you for the hundred dollar redos. Uh, I actually managed to convince one of my Mormon friends that Duel of the Fates was the Mor was Mormon chanting. <laughs> That's impressive. Um, oh, and then, the, so the last one is why did Tiero fast forward through Rags's Mark Hamill clips? Um, there was a couple of comments I saw that said that it wasn't fast forwarded for them on the original video, but when we played it on here, uh, Rags had clips from Mark Hamill to, you know, prove a point or whatever, and instead of skipping them, or just acknowledging that they existed and moving on from them, you, they were played, but in, like, times three speeds, you couldn't hear what he was saying, and it was a good, like... Yeah. I, like, yeah, it was just bizarre, that. like, I don't understand what the idea yeah, of that was. Yeah, I mean, was. generally, the, the fast-forwarding was done because, like, it was... The, the point was that Mark Hamill has, has is, like, you're, you're showing an array of clips to make it very clear what Mark Hamill said, and all the clips, even though they do they do say like in different ways, they're sending home the same message, mm -hmm. and so it was to try and preserve time, but admittedly, uh, still didn't quite manage to do that. I would describe it as inelegant, because like, I was I was so confused with what the point of it was. That's that's fair. Yeah, it, it would have helped me if those clips had been understandable. Mm -hmm. That's fair enough. Um, but yeah, I am. Um, if if you guys wanna, I mean, th that's pretty convenient, by the way, that this video has been played from zero to near the end, and that's makes for our whole conversation. Yeah, yeah. And we, we've 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 discussed this. It would have it would have been better if if I did like make it more um, efficient. Definitely, there were ways to do it. It was just the way I was thinking about it at the time. And, and I so that there were better ways to go about it. If are you, is there anything else either of you'd like to say before we sort of move on? Nah, I think that's unless um if something's brought up later, sure. But for now, I'm I'm fine. I'm satisfied for the moment. I wait for the bulletins as events warrant. The what? What? The bulletins of events warrant. That's what I heard. No, I'm good. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, and Tiro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. So the context for this is Vox. I don't even know what the hell they were thinking. Uh, everybody like assumes that. They were told, obviously, yeah, if you couldn't, guys can pop your volume on. Everybody assumes that they were told by someone to release a Marvel-related video. And, like, they were like, what should we go with? It's like, uh, I don't know, I overrated. I think they were asked, what's the most overrated thing? Yeah, like, Something I... Something that's really overrated and popular, and everybody was like, the Marvel... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so the, the, what, what the reason they give. I'm saying, like, on a meta level, like, their writing staff was like... All right. Yes, yeah, so we got to do like they half this. They half asked this video so hard that it's like it's like they didn't they didn't agree, but they're like, well, this is what people want a video on, so I guess okay. we got to do something. And this is the thing. Give me a sec. Uh, I don't have any like history of Vox. Like, what is Vox anyway? Like, do, do you know what the channel is, Rags? Some bullshit. Some bullshit. Uh, Vox. Vox is um. Vox is a. It's it's very weird because they've got like this hot take YouTube channel. But they're also based on a media company, um, which which covers covers the covers the news, I think, and opinion pieces. I could be wrong, but that's I see them a lot on Twitter. Um, and super it's like lefty, regressive, box, box very media, I think, racist sort of. Uh, it's really, I mean, they're really. Do they do like BuzzFeed sort of things, or kind of? I, I think I'd say I think, they're a step down from BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed is, honestly, is it, I mean, yeah, I think I think Vox is that. Yeah, I think they're they're on the on the left politically, um, and for some reason, their YouTube channel is more like uh, one of those like hot takes, like mm -hmm. yeah, they're media they're hot progressive takes. hot takes channel. And like I'm, I'm a little MCU fanboy, but you guys have got familiarity with the MCU, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah for got... the most part, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly, I'm fairly knowledgeable. So, should we start with the title? Do you think the universe feels empty? <laughs> I don't even know where one would begin to make that connection. It feels, oh, it's, it's, it's hyper dense. I would say, especially the, uh, right. the payoff ones, like the Avengers films. Oh yeah. I, I really enjoy a lot of the Marvel cinematic films. Um, I'd say probably my favorite is uh, The Winter Soldier, personally. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I feel that I feel that what I love about it is that just the characters really make make it, because in many ways, like The Winter Soldier is is, is as traditional as they come. 
and it's yet completely like expanded by just the depth of of each character and how they interact and that's what i love about it and that's what i love about a lot of the marvel films that they're actually like uh, so i i think like they're, they're just taking a a thing that people feel like completely the opposite and then just going against <laughs> it and saying, well, yeah, yeah that is almost you know hot takes they can be that, that is what yeah it's that's like what you, you could are. do a thing it's, it's, it's the idea of like doing it before it becomes accepted almost mm. and mm. so the idea is exactly. like is this a hot take that the marvel cinematic it's universe like, feels empty it's like hmm. for its own sake because um, a lot of people did feel that Marvel was a little bit arbitrary with its connections at first, but like they've been working, I I would argue since, it's like, I think Civil War or a bit before that is when they start to really crank up. Because Iron Man 3 is mysteriously without any connections to anything really. It's like the president gets kidnapped and the world is at threat sort of thing, but like no Avengers turn up and nobody seems to care. And it's just like, oh, we're doing that again with the, the universe sort of doesn't give a shit. But then if you look at stuff like, Civil War, or, or Winter Soldier, I think came out before Iron Man 3, interestingly enough, but there's more interactions with the characters that we know exist in this world, which is what's important, I would say. Um, and then events having an effect uh, for, you know, from the place they started to other places in the world. It's like, oh yeah, because this actually happens in this world. It's not just arbitrarily that you know movies are uh, taking place at the same time and that nobody gives a shit about each other. And again, that's why I'd say the Avengers films are the best, because you get so many clashes where you're like, oh, it's like watching Doctor Strange at the same time as watching an Iron Man movie. Ooh, you know, all that comic book style, like, happy fangasm stuff. So, yeah. yeah Robin's so edgy. Here we go, I suppose. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is overrated. Ooh. Oh, that's right. Well, Whoa. I mean, that's a different, oh, different to his title, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh. Slow down there, buddy. So, what do we think about that statement? <laughs> qualify it yeah i was yeah. gonna say because i probably would agree in certain cases like i think black panther's overrated i think oh hell yeah you um, saw that shit that i posted on twitter a couple days ago games radar is like the top like top 25 best movies of 2018 <laughs> i was like i don't that's first that's a lot of yeah top movies for a, a year that's had a lot of shitty movies and they're like number one black panther and i'm like fuck off but uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of like, uh, there are other ones I'd consider overrated, but then I'd also be like, but there are, there are certain Marvel films that sometimes I'm like, a little bit underrated because it gets brushed under the whole banner of, oh, it's just another superhero movie. It's like, oh, yeah, it's well, I, I think I think it's one of those things that, that kind of opening with a statement like the cinematic universe is overrated. You have to like, how do you, how do you break that down? Because in a way the, the universe is, is an interaction of individual films that all differ in their quality. Mm. And, and so what, what is there to say about like, it, it's such a general statement. You really, ha you really have to go into the details and then explain how the interaction of each of these films would then, would then cause it to be overrated. But I doubt they'll do that given it's only nine minutes, 39 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, that's, see, that's already the assumption, right? It's like, oh, you're going to tell us what all of the ratings of the films are compared to their actual uh, assumed quality in some way and then get an average overall or look at audience retention. It's like, no, no, that's not what's going to happen. And the funny and thing is... your best bet. So that's what I mean. Like In terms of structure, we've got... This is why the Marvel Universe feels empty and the opening statement is it's overrated. And so it's like, I'm already disjointed and we've got seven seconds in. But uh, there we are. Right, this is happening. Okay, so why is this not just a steaming pile of clickbait? Hear me out. <laughs> <Mr>. Fox, <laughs> you're you're the fucking steamy, steamiest pile of clickbait that exists, Vox. Do you think they you're made the video script and then they went back and said, fuck, we should put that at the beginning just to try and hopefully stymie a bit of the criticism? Because... <laughs> I, I have a feeling that the, the, a lot of these channels do is that they... Think of a title, and they base a script around it. Yeah, um, because most people would do it the other way around, right? Yeah, like most exactly normal that. people. <laughs> be like, the title is supposed to represent what's in your fucking video, not the other way around. Boxer, not normal people. So far, there have been 20 of these movies, and Uber producer Kevin Feige says there will be at least 20 more in the MCU, Marvel Cinematic Universe, right, but they're, they're not within out the yet. next... I was gonna say, 
Yes, moving on. Like we're yeah. waiting, waiting for the you know. <laughs> I like mm. the the fact display parts of videos because you're just like, well, yes, we can skip over these. Ten years. Seriously, half of these people could disappear, and it would still be 148 too many kids. Yeah, they did. When we asked Fox's audience for things they think are overrated, Marvel and. Well, so I'm I'm confused. Is that really like their justification for why they did this? Is like, wouldn't you want to? Hang, hang on, that's five upvotes as well. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's that's they fair loved enough. it though. The one, the no, one I mean, above it has twenty. But yeah, like I'm saying, like why one. wouldn't you choose the mo? Why are you? I don't know. Like what I mean, relevance is this? It's like, I mean, it's not necessarily about which one has the most likes. It's about which one's going to get the most views. Hmm. In that case, yes, this was an excellent choice. But they didn't need a comment to tell them to do it, did they? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the truth. They, 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 I mean, I guess they were just looking for ideas. Because uh, they could have done Star Wars, couldn't they? They could have done Star Star Wars is over. thanks Abdullah Al Kamal. <laughs> and DC's movies came up. Oh again. fuck! Man, oh they're oh just, shit! They're cheating. Now it's at fifty. It was a five. It's four seconds. No, they're cheating. There you go. Okay, so it was the top comment. That's fair. Enough. A bunch Absolutely, of it was like it was blasted. I guess there's a lot of hate for the the Marvel Cinematic Universe out there. That's fair enough. I, I guess. Which is why it's but important yeah. that these though. videos are made to share why. But I, I think to a lay person, they don't even like think about it as a universe so much as individual like heroes with their own movies. Because mm -hmm. that's how that's certainly how like my my mom and my dad and some other people I know think about it. They don't think about the whole universe. They're like, yeah, Doctor Strange and Iron Man and all that. There's like they're all in well, little sections. Let's be fair. Like, there are people out there who, if you said uh, the Incredible Hulk is not in the MCU, the movie, they'd be like, okay. Yeah, I didn't think it was. And then you go, no, it is. And they go, oh shit. Uh, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm -hmm. It's hard to keep track sometimes, I suppose. Because movies. The movies. In the United States alone, they've grossed more than $6.5 billion. Nice. And yet there's something missing. When you look at the history of fictional universes, and at the MCU in particular, it's possible to understand how it could be. Why fixed. is it broken? Oh, so his premise then is we're going to look at the history of cinematic universes to explain why the MCU is broken. Well, yeah, they, they, they asserted that we, it can be fixed so without if, telling us how it's broken. It feels empty, it's overrated, and now it's broken. It's like, which one of these are we tackling first, or are they all the same thing? Uh, they get, they, a tenth of their video is gone, so... That's the part I always find interesting about this. It's like, you count intros and then establishment of facts before the actual you know, meat of the video, and it's like, man, you're already running out of time. Like, you gotta, gotta kick it up. That's a long time to... Go back to 1939, No, you'll don't. <laughs> No. I don't know if this is gonna be relevant, dude, but okay. I already have, have questions if this is relevant or not. Nine. All right. Human Torch was... He was a fucking beast. Absolutely, look at him. He could, he could... He is, like, pretty well... He's in Fuego. <laughs> Alright, let's see what they've got. The Marvel I mean, Universe. It's in Marvel Mystery Comics number 7. These characters aren't that well known today, but here Betty tells Namor that the Human Torch exists, Who's establishing Namor? continuity and okay. crossover potential. This was the start of a new era, one in which corporations produced fiction. The idea was simple. You could use the fame of one property to enhance the audience for another. And yeah. Marvel okay. wasn't alone in recognizing the financial opportunity. I was about to say, is he now going to talk about how other people bad? had this idea too? Yeah, I'm I, kind of I, I don't see how this is bad. I, I, I guess it's in case we don't understand what a cinematic universe could I be, guess, or what, yeah. the history of it. I don't maybe, really know why he's explaining it. Maybe they're setting the stage, but... Now, like, 20% of their video is done. I was going to say, it would make much more sense to do this if you had an hours video, maybe? Yeah, man. Like, I think most of us know that Marvel movies are big, and everyone knows about them, and they make lots of money. And mm -hmm. we all know that the comics go back a long way. I figured the, the first thing you tackle is uh, how the universe is, well, how the films link to each other, and how it's, you know, it's, it's, it's XYZ. That would be yeah. a great place to start, rather than this is the history of when properties would cross over. It's like, oh dear, well... You're not wrong, as far as I know, by the way, because I don't know the history of comics. I'll just take his yeah, word I'll for it. I'll take their word for it, I suppose. Opportunity of crossovers in the 1930s and 40s. The Green Hornet. Look at that picture on the wall. The man on that horse is one of your ancestors. In the 1940s, the Green Hornet revealed that the series' central character, 
Britt Reed was the grand nephew of the Lone Ranger. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I didn't know that. popular okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know that. That's new for me. I yeah. hope you do something about those crooks, just as your pioneer ancestor did. Movie studios were thinking about this too. When Abbott and Costello met Frankenstein, it joined the Dracula, Frankenstein, and Wolfman movie franchise. Well, I guess now we're All sort right. of getting closer to the MCU in that we're in film franchises. But yeah, the monster okay. movies did cross over, I suppose. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I, I'm All assuming right. you guys would have known about that at least. Cause yeah, because I because like Van Helsing, they're Frankenstein and Dracula were in Van Helsing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I don't care what people say. I like that movie. <laughs> wait, you like wait, that. you talk about the Hugh Jackman one? Yeah. I can't. I have I, not I, watched that in so long, but I know that that's really considered a bad film. I genuinely, I can't remember it. Well, those people are wrong. It's amazing. <laughs> it's got a machine gun crossbow and shit. Oh yeah, I remember that. Oh, he dips it yeah. in like. Holy water, doesn't he? Holy water, yeah, and then he shoots the vampire ladies with it. All right, Sounds well. pretty decent. Yep. <laughs> As is with a goofy comedy. It was basically Universal Studios' Avengers Infinity War, but with more uh... running into walls. By the 60s, <laughs> even DC cops... <laughs> Oh. This is so weird. Oh. You know how we we've, we've talked about this before, but me and Rags basically like every time. Oh, and when when Wolf is here, of course, we'll we tackle a video and we'll be like, okay, so these are the actual things that are wrong with this one, even though the last one we covered had the, all these different things wrong, and there's all these different things. It's like I'm I don't know where to begin with this one. Like, yeah, it's like I mean, all right, it's... this is nice background info to have, I suppose, but I wish they they're running out of time. Yeah, they are. They are. They need to. They kind of need to. Especially like a third the problem, of the way done. Consider the fact that we're we're willing to watch the whole thing, but like the amount of people who are like, yeah, tell me why the Marvel universe is empty. People who like hate the the MCU, even they're gonna be like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't mind setting up premises, but but what? We're nearly a third of the way. Like you gotta, you gotta hurry. I, yeah. It's, it just feels like I. I problem is I can't see an argument being formed. Like if someone can present some premises yeah. and like interesting points, then I can probably like maybe like see where they're going and then I can wait it out. But this is just like they give me a, like a history. It's like okay. Yeah, they so, better end this with a big ol'. So with all that being said, <laughs> the MCU really... equals bad. <laughs> it's like okay. Comics was catching up. Like when Superman entered his Fortress of Solitude and finally met Batman. Mm -hmm. They enjoyed some cake. God, don't play music. Right. Everyone will get strikes. Assuming but there's an actual... They, they enjoyed some cake. <laughs> <laughs> they did eat cake. Let them, well, I say let uh, them eat cake. Let <laughs> them eat cake. That's a great... Let them eat that cake sounds like something a famous person solitude. would say. Yeah. I think that's what some... I think that's... I was, I was joking. A fantastic Four think I'm trapped, but they don't suspect my real that's power. Mary Antoinette said that, right? Is it? I think so. It's she, attributed she, she, to she, her. Yeah, she yeah. said um, Maybe she's it's paraphrased. But... Yeah, uh, so... Yeah. <laughs> I have learned that when Batman and Superman... Which we're getting closer, by the way. Superheroes combining, even though we sort of did the Human Torch earlier, but hey. Getting closer to the MCU, getting there. By the time Spider-Man got his comic in 1963, he was spending time with the Fantastic Four yep. and promoting guest appearances from the Hulk. And this was also when the Marvel Universe's problems started. Ooh, so hey. 60s is when things went to shit. Things went, I'm, I'm telling you, man, things went to shit in the 60s. Yeah. Man, Before that's... that, everybody knew their place. Assuming he kicks up into actual arguments now, it was a three minute intro, which I can get over if the rest is solid. I'm not sure what the point of it was, but mm -hmm. hey. Yeah. This snow globe contains a half century of television. It's the basis for the Tommy Westfall universe theory, which some argue might be the biggest fictional universe of all. The snow globe appeared on the Saint 80s Elsewhere, television yeah. show Saint Elsewhere. That scene possibly showed that the whole series had taken place inside a snow globe world imagined by okay. a minor character named Tommy yeah, Westfall. And he's like an autistic kid the or theory, something, yeah is that if a show had a crossover with St. Elsewhere, that show must have taken place in Tommy's okay. Snow Globe too. Okay. And every crossover that show had, no matter how tangential, would be in the Snow Globe, and so on and so on. So... But how is the Marvel Cinematic what, okay. Universe overrated or Just, empty? 
just to clarify, if I've got this right, he's saying that, like, you know, when a show has, like, say, I don't know, someone references Buffy in Law and Order, that counts as... Because I'm assuming that yeah, some of these connections have to be that vague. As long as they're tied back to St. Elsewhere, then it's just, uh, just a dream in the mind of an autistic kid. And that, I mean... Yeah, I don't know how this actually changes anything. It just adds an. Extra Are we getting like a top? second introduction now? Because like I'm not sure where this is leading. Uh, uh, I will, we'll see. I guess. Yeah. It's very hard on this television chart. And like this would have been, you know, this is a graphic that someone had to make. So this is, I mean, the editing's yeah. been pretty good so far. I have to admit. Like, it... yeah. Uh, gee, the Andy Griffith shows over there, and we've got Coach and. You got X Files is connected to like a. I'm assuming all these th these are is literally just people making a reference. This must this chart must have taken fucking ages to make. Especially mm -hmm. to get it right too, because you'd have to research yeah, this. Yeah, assuming assuming this is right, like wow, Veronica Mars and X Files and jeez, yeah, shows in the same universe in the same snow globe. It spans from 1952 to today. It's a dumb theory, but it's oh, meant to. thanks. Then that said, the Tommy <laughs> okay. Westfall universe actually illustrates some of the problems with the Marvel Cinematic okay. Universe. Okay, okay, so he's like making comparison. We've got it. Like, so, all right, so he's like equi he's like making equivalence, basically. He's gonna explain Maybe. how the snow globe will, will now infer us into a, a problem with the MCU. I'm following I along. Guess. Crossovers require a bunch of artistic compromises. No okay. one wants Cheers and I Love Lucy to be a connected universe. It's because a bunch of business decisions connected them. That's not true. I mean... Yeah, I, I don't mean, think the, there's the, necessarily the, anything wrong with it as long as it's done well. I mean... Yeah. There are I think a casual nod to something else can be kind of cool. Like the idea that yeah. American Dad and Family Guy could take place in the same universe? Like, I'm on board with that. Like, they don't have to have like a direct crossover. I mean, it's, it's just like, but if everything is like they, the way they showed it on that, on that graphic was that it was linked to a load of other shows that was then linked to the one at the end. And a lot of them must is... have been tangential, like the X Files stuff. You know, yeah. like just a character saying, "Man, you're you're more skeptical than Scully." It would be like <laughs> so basically no relationship at all. Yeah, like that, how does that um, damage anything? Why is why is that? Why would that be a problem if they there's literally no reference? direct reference at least like who and then cares? there are shows like you know buffy and angel take place in each other's universes for a benefit they have they have crossovers and uh episodes that are part ones and part twos that cross the shows which is genuinely mm -hmm. a great thing so it's kind of weird that he's just like yeah this causes problems like yeah. uh okay I, want, I mean, I'm assuming he's going to tell us what the problems are, at least. Sometimes yeah. the network forced crossovers on producers. Other times, the producers came up with it. Gary Marshall said that the reason that Mork from Ork knew Fonzie from Happy Days and Laverne from Laverne and Shirley was because his son said that Fonzie should dream about an alien. These crossovers... Well, that's the writing. Yeah. What's that, that got to do with the fact that they the crossed idea. over? Hmm. <laughs> Like, you I could have, have written that a bit wrong. better than saying it was yeah. a dream or whatever. Oh dear. Oh dear, indeed. Are the whole about point is that Mork is, is, like, he, isn't he supposed to be? Because the, at the end of it, every Mork and Mindy episode ends with Mork going back to, like, the alien overlords and, like, making commentary about humans. I've and never it. seen it, so... I would go strictly off that. I just mean in concept, the idea that you cross over isn't inherently going to provide you with bad writing, it's the writer that would do that. Yeah. Like, can you really make Fonzie appear in Mork and Mindy reasonably? I'd be like, yeah? Yeah. Sure. Isn't that ridiculous, Why is not? it? <laughs> it's not telling a good story. The Tommy Westfall universe is a thought experiment. Frasier and the X-Files don't mix, even though they do in Tommy Westfall's globe. Why, why can't they mix? I know the tones yeah. are different, but that's the idea of, you know, the... So I mean, maybe he's going to reverse the formula and say, basically, um, it, these things exist in Tommy Westfall's globe, and you wouldn't see them together, and they probably wouldn't work as a crossover. And then he, he'll say, this is the same thing with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so why would they cross over? Like, is he going to say maybe that something like Ant-Man, because it's really uppity, happy, and comedy-like, wouldn't mix with Winter Soldier, because it's... Almost like a espionage, darker-toned thriller. 
yeah, that would that would be my hunch. I think he's going to reverse it and say these things don't don't mix. So why would you do it with Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is yeah. a very invalid how argument. Come, that, well, how come everyone in Cheers is so happy and everyone's laughing <laughs> and so lucky, and then you go the X Files and everything's just sad? Well, I was about to say like that's the nature of a universe. If you go to a hospital or you go to a children's daycare, the atmosphere will be different in real life. And how it works, but again, we've just inferred a point that doesn't exist yet, so let's see if he does make it. But even at Marvel, where continuity was planned, it became a hassle to maintain. Okay. Marvel editor and writer Lynn Ween said the problem at Marvel was that we suddenly became a business with a bunch of books that Stan, don't think ever in his heart, expected to last more than a couple of years. That doesn't mean it's without a solution. I don't know what that point assists. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, considering I'm just, that the movies can only tell. Let's be fair; like a few issues of a comic could, like one one comic could make one film. So, and and this is they don't even necessarily go with the comics. They always break away from the comics. So it's like I don't know what that. I'm not sure what well, that point Mahler, helps. Maybe the way to solve this is with standalone sequels. Oh no, <laughs> we didn't bring that up. <laughs> I I don't want to bring it back, but I, I do not find this statement funny, uh, Yaro, the, the idea that you can only really look at The Last Jedi as a sequel if you interpret it as a sequel. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. <laughs> we, it's okay, we can push on. In 1965, right. Lee replaced most of the Avengers just because the continuity for the original group had become too confusing to deal with. This continuity yeah, clutter happen. happened in the movies, too. I genuinely think we're about to hit that in the MCU. There's so many heroes that have so many abilities and resources mm. that it's going to get very complicated to maintain. But I don't think we've had much of that problem up till now. Yeah, I think it's a sense of scale is really the thing. Iron Man kicked off the MCU in 2008. Mm -hmm. The universe exposition dump didn't happen until after the credits. Mr. Stark, you become part of a bigger universe. I'm sorry, exposition dump? That's literally just a teaser. Yeah, that's not yeah. an exposition dump. It's just Nick going, hey! It's probably one of the most genius things, like... It was a really good idea that they done. did that. It was, a, it was an incredible, like, idea, like... I, 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 you know... It, it was it was a very very innovative thing to do and it's, it was completely like like that right. seemed a bit aggressive you know like exposition mm -hmm. dump like, this this right? this I mean, video is a dump so there <laughs> you fucking got him rags yeah there we go. nailed him owned lived thirty owned. week <laughs> excuse right in the middle of the movie I think our first move should be calling the Avengers. <sighs> I spent half my life trying to keep this technology out of the hands of Stark. I'm sure as hell I'm not going to hand deliver it to one now. Okay. These heavy-handed yeah. additions that's are reasonable. Whoa. Okay. okay. That, but that's a reasonable thing okay. to say. Time to bring out my MCU fanboyness. Um, going just from the films, because I think that's the point of the MCU. Uh, the, the opening scene of Ant-Man establishes that Hank Pym doesn't trust anybody at S.H.I.E.L.D. and he wants to protect his patent before they use it for evil, basically. The film itself is about somebody else discovering the Pym particle and using it to sell it to, like, terrorists and shit. And he has to stop them, or he wants to. And because Ant-Man, or Paul Rudd's character, is a little bit slow sometimes, he's like, hey, because we're in the the vegetative of this, why don't we ask them for help? And Hank Pym's like, have you not paid attention to anything I've told you? Like, we don't want Stark to get the Pym particle because Hank Pym sees Stark as a weapons uh, seller. This is also brought up in Civil War, by the way, when Ant-Man is like, Hank Pym was right, never trust a Stark. This is a thing. Yeah. Hank Pym does not trust Tony Stark or his father. They That's not arbitrary at all. That's like the reason the Avengers are not in Ant-Man, because Hank Pym doesn't want to get anywhere near them. And this is brought up again in Ant-Man 2, by the way. Uh, see, that I've already got a problem now, because this is the actual substance of his actual yeah. video, and it's just inaccurate. Like, uh, this is not reasons against it being um, a full universe, or, or reasons for it being empty. This is reasons for it being strong. Yeah, and if anything, you know, a guy like me, who has a moderate understanding of the MCU, was like, yeah, that seems reasonable. That makes sense to me. And you could be like, no, that's just convenient so that you don't have to have Iron Man in the film. I'd be like, I mean, it would be a problem if Iron Man was in the film working with Hank Pym. That would be a problem. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like I said, it's it's a problem for Iron Man three. Like I I did say, I don't know why you wouldn't just reference that. Iron Man three pretends like there are no other heroes in the universe. Like it's kind of an issue because the president gets kidnapped. Like I said, which would attract the attention of people like I don't know uh, Captain America, for example. Captain America, mm. <laughs> like you probably care if the president was kidnapped. Hashtag not my president. <laughs> Are about getting crossover hype, not about telling a good story. But there's a bigger problem. That's literally what a part it? of the story. <sighs> there's I'm... a bigger problem. It's like it's for the story, not against it, dude. And continuity in the MCU, and there is a way to okay. do it better. All right, let's hear it out. Oh, you're the Avengers. The rest of this scene is a standard movie fight. Their universe is only as deep as some merchandise. And what? Spider-Man Homecoming is the most connected of the singular films. It has so many references to the, the... The... What's his name? Vulture. The whole reason he exists as a bad guy is because of the Avengers. Like, not just them, but the I, actual film, yeah. the Avengers. It was... It was. A, I mean, it, first it was actually like... A, I really enjoyed the film. I don't know about what you guys thought, but I, I, I really, really enjoyed like uh, Homecoming. Um... Iron Man is in uh, that movie, as, as Vid just said. It, 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 it's, it's tonally well done. It's really like, it, 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 you know, it's a standalone film in a way, but the how it's intertwined with the rest of the universe is very well done. I, I thought it was... Well, I, I mean, let's be honest here. He's, he's be, being a bit of a dick. This is one scene in the film, and he's done it for a joke, where he's like, this is how skin-deep the connections are. It's just merch. It's like, no... Everything else. He's got merch of Iron Man right like... there. Iron Man is in the film. I mean, yeah, I <laughs> I kind of think that he just has to step back and like I just see it as a as a as a cheeky wink. Like you know, if it sells some merch on the side, like yeah, I mean obviously I'd expect what? the actual films with the people that they appear in to sell more merch. Yeah, like, they're action figures in their own universe. They established that in one of the TV shows. You well, can yeah, buy like all the shit we have for football teams. Exactly, the this, Avengers, which is why freaking... the universe is genuinely what I would say is like. I'm not going to say it's amazing, but I think it's strong compared to what it could be. Yeah, so I mean, selling merch, you know, that's what the, <laughs> that's what that's a, that's an output of what what they do. I mean, also, what does this have to do with Mork and Mindy or the history of comic books? You know, filler. like this is clearly a writing that critique. Filler. Yeah, it's, it's that was filler. filler. That was filler. It's like, look, I mean, look how smart we are with our graphics and our old comic book was, knowledge. It was an attempt for them to like sound knowledgeable to try and give their to rather yeah exactly to to give their opinions like foundations where there actually are none. Will Mork and Mindy appear in the Avengers? That's my question. I hope so. I hope <laughs> Mork is. It shouldn't have been Captain Marvel. They should have been like call Mork. <laughs> And a few Easter eggs. A few it's cool Easter when eggs. Peter Parker's classroom has a picture of Bruce Banner in the corner, but it's not a transformed universe. What? Did, why would? You, why are you treating it like this is that and the merchandise are the universe? only connections? It's way more than that. And I'm sorry, but that's an awesome detail that he makes it up there with, uh, like actual real life scientists that got Bruce Banner. That's cool. But obviously, yeah, I mean it's. It's more subtle, but it's it's something. Yeah, and that's the but thing. You'd be like, well, that's... That far more obvious. If this was the only reference, you'd be like, well, that's a pretty skin-deep reference. It's like, but it's not. Spider-Man Homecoming has some of the most references to it being a universe. Remember yeah. the remember the tapes from Captain America about, like, better behaving in school? Like, that's a great piece of will building, because I could totally see him doing that. Yeah. And they always play tapes in schools, or at least they did for my generation, where it'd be like, yeah, just watch this, you'll be a better person. <laughs> Exactly. Including the imaginary brand of red Look apple cigarettes know. in multiple movies. It's cool. It's not a coherent, intertwined world. The MCU. What do you require to be considering it an intertwined world if um, not Iron Man actually turning up in Homecoming? Yeah, but red apple. <laughs> okay, carry on playing. It was like our own, except for the crossovers. You can test it with the characters. Add Aquaman to that poster. If you didn't know DC owned what? him, would anyone notice? What? Would anyone notice? This, yeah. Well, yeah, he'd be in. He'd be in the film. People would see him. I mean, he would uh, have like dialogue. What and stuff. an odd point. I'm not even sure what he's trying to say with that. I think he's saying that because 
Oh, I got nothing. I I'm tr- I'm trying to think how how I think he's saying that because he said no one would notice, which is part firstly. Like, what he's trying to say is no one would notice that he's from the DC universe. They wouldn't be able to distinguish between them, um, between people from their own universe and people from other universes, which I think is a fairly redundant point. But that is what I think he's trying to say. Well, I was going to say, but like, that, isn't that a plus, the fact that we have wizards plus scientists plus radioactive people plus uh, people bitten by spiders plus... Uh, agents that have worked for Russia, you know, like what I'm trying to argue here is like it's almost like a universe. Yeah, what? yeah. It, it, I think think that's that's kind of kind of the good good thing about it. And what he he's saying is that the universe itself, and this is what I assume is going to come to eventually, because people from outside the universe, um, if they were added, no one would really notice. It means the universe itself <laughs> lacks an identity. Let's just say and, this, and man. therefore the universe feels empty. And there you have your your title. Oh well, so that you know that I could I could there's stuff to discuss there at least. So that could actually fix this video if that's where he's going with it. But drop Mork and Mindy into the Avengers with like seriously, that's not going to work. <laughs> they can't have everything in here. It's kind of stupid to be like if you drop Aquaman because it's like yeah, but Aquaman is a superhero. And he's not in it. Well, my my point, yeah, like he's that we don't have a water yeah. one yet. We don't have a an Aquaman equivalent. So yeah, he would fit in. I don't really. Well, let's yeah, let's see how he develops at uh, this point. The MCU has no rules beyond corporate ownership. It's a superhero hodgepodge. The same goes for it DC. It doesn't have rules. It definitely has rules and superhero hodgepodge. If what that translates to into is it has lots of superheroes, I'd be like yes. Star Wars is like a hodgepodge of bounty hunters and Jedi and and uh, politicians and DC have done such a pathetic job. <laughs> I don't, don't know why he brought Look them up. The Flash. I, Look at that it, chick. It's just depressing. Like you went from like the poster for for Infinity War, which is so so well done, and then we just went to this. To like this. Uh, I can't just watch Justice sad. League seriously. I, I like laugh my ass off watching that I film. Just, it's so funny. I just, oh man. Also, um, like that. It's like someone. That's someone like they're not even out of high school with that design like that. Just so yeah. Oh man. And it, clearly, the DC logo is supposed to be right there in the middle of Batman. Also, uh. Oh. Uh, yeah, because I played the Ultimate Alliance game recently. Namor is the guy who's the Aquaman equivalent for um, the Marvel Universe, which my point oh. being with that is that, yeah, Aquaman could slip in if nobody knew about him from DC because we'd be like, oh, it's a guy who came from an underwater secret society. You'd be like, I could see that fitting yeah, in. Yeah, they fucking made up Wakanda. They yeah. Get away with anything. Like, they, could, they could do anything. Like, yeah. Like, here's, here's you add a new Hawk- country. Oh, God, he's oh. saying you can add Hawkeye to Justice League? Okay. Hawkeye okay. here. Nobody would care, okay. and not. What do you mean? Just because it's Hawkeye. Is Marvel's okay? own pro- uh, What are you um, saying, sir? So he's he's saying that there's no there's no identity to the universes compared to what? Uh, um. <laughs> you are. Like, uh, I, I I mean that's the, I mean, like I mean he's. He, like we yeah. couldn't see yeah. Iron Man in Star Wars. It's like we probably could. Mandalorians yeah. aren't far away from that. I mean, Here's the thing, like if if Hawkeye is in Justice League and Aquaman is in Infinity War, I don't see how that it may, they could be. I guess. I mean, why not? I mean, it doesn't make it. I don't. Yeah, like, I, mean, I don't see how it's make getting it. here overrated. Property yeah, X-Men, or broken with a movie universe owned by Fox and likely going to Disney shows a better way. This universe is not just crossovers. Um, Every character, human. And mutant. Um, Could can you pause it? So, if we if we put Iron Man in X Men, people would likely notice. <laughs> yeah. Um, and 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 so what he's trying to do here is he's trying to compare a very different realm of universes. He's trying. To, he's saying he's he's used. A rather dishonest argument because he's compared two 
the DC universe, which is a superhero universe, with the Marvel universe, which is a superhero universe, and then and then is bringing the X Men universe in as something that is different. But X Men isn't necessarily the same genre. Same genre. I mean, even it though there are clear differences, it, yeah. the, the, the X Men universe relies on the world being the way it is. Exactly. Not, like, not it, to mention, if you instantly said that. By the way, the X Men universe exists within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It would raise so many fucking questions, and I, it wouldn't make sense. I'm because, still like, stuck. What about all these mutants and stuff? Like, what? This is like, like you a guys, big fucking deal. You've seen all the X Men movies, right? Or maybe most of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen the continuity of the X Men films one. is like the worst of a super, of a of a universe. It is the worst. Oh yeah. They there's nothing worse than X Men because it contradicts itself everywhere, and there's jokes about it. Like yeah. Deadpool jokes that he doesn't even understand which continuity he's in because there's like three. Or if you count that Logan separated, because a lot of people do. So yeah, it's, 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 it's don't even like, like it's X Men one, two, and three are in the same continuity, and then First Class, Days of Future Past. Those two films behave as if X Men one, two, and three actually took place within them, but then it re does it and resets to create X Men mm -hmm. Apocalypse. And Logan, I don't even like. I don't know. I uh, honestly they, don't know. Basically, he's. He's using two very different things and trying to create an equivalence. But and you know, X Men like that can be hardly be called a universe even like no, it's more it's... like a franchise. Yeah, what if is in it? It'd be like saying the James the Bond universe has more continuity or something. Yeah. Well, yeah, James Bond would probably be the closest thing to standalone sequels that you could possibly get. Let's put it this way, yeah. uh, you know he was like, you have the Avengers films that bring the single ones together, all X-Men films are Avengers films. Like, every one of them are Avengers films in their own universe because it's about all the X-Men. It's not, you got the Rogue movie, the Wolverine movie, and the, the, the Scott Summers movie, and then we saw X-Men, which brought them together. Which, by the way, would probably generate whatever problem he has with the MCU, which I'm not 100% clear on anyway. But, um, mm -hmm. I see what, I... I I just can't believe he's referencing X-Men. It's like notoriously bad for continuity and universe connections, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Universe is not just crossovers. Every character, human... Would you really say that the X-Men has crossovers? I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's because the intention from the beginning was to have all the characters, but his problem is that with Marvel, it wasn't the intention from the very beginning to have all the characters together. So yeah, I think it was dependent on if Iron Man did well, and that's pretty much what made it happen. It's, yeah, and I have no, I have no real problem with that. Well, yeah, it's a safe thing to do if you're going to try and make money. It's massive, if like a crossover does well, like I, uh, it, it, it doesn't have to be your intention from from the start. You know, if you can build on that and turn that crossover into something productive and, and and genuinely like the contributes to, to to both the stories of of characters involved then you know like why does it matter what the initial intentions were and mutant has taken sides in a generations long battle with real stakes unlike marvel's civil war oh, oh. what but captain america was born in what oh. year exactly <laughs> Real stakes, unlike Civil War. Oh wow, real stakes. Oh, I, I'm 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 not boy. gonna bother boring you guys to death with an explanation. I'm just gonna make a video for that film one day, but I'll just say, wrong. Oh, oh boy, no. real do, do, do stakes. You remember, do you remember when? Uh, do you remember when some Avengers ate cake? <laughs> that was that was. Like oh yeah, the... those they weren't Avengers. That was Batman and. <laughs> Fortress of Solitude. Get your lore cake. straight, man. Uh, man, this is that this was is from why... like the forties. <laughs> hey, it's all part of the MCU. Do lore. <laughs> that leads to creative possibilities, like decade jumping, and even creative possibilities like decade jumping. They literally decade have to jumping. ignore past sometimes. They're like, ah, oh, fuck, Jeez. that didn't happen. And you're arguing. That the connections in the MCU are so surface and skin skin level, while the they do they have they literally jump decades in X Men, so we can't even connect them other than the actors. Like, what are you talking about? Tonal experimentation with deep integration to the X Men. Tonal experimentation. How could you not say that Thor Ragnarok was not a tonal experimentation? 
Yeah, this is nuts. I don't know where the hell he's Chat. coming from with this. I don't know. Stop using X Men. He's just chatting shit. Let's let's be clear. In mythology. Stop using X Men. If not the continuity. When oh, he said if not the continuity there, did he? Oh, okay. Well, that's just fucking. Okay. How could you ignore the continuity? <laughs> mythology. If not the continuity. So he's, yeah, he's saying the mythology is the positive, not the continuity. I don't know what the fuck that means. It's funny, sure. How do you have mythology without continuity? Like, you can't build anything if you have no continuity. You can only just declare. Yeah, then... Uh, I mean, it would be the most... I mean, mythology without continuity would be the most... Like Stories like start saying, and finish oh, within their own story. This, yeah, it's like every single oh. every single story you heard about Zeus would be its own completely... He's wrong anyway. X-Men 1, 2, and 3... They had strong continuity. It's just that's where yeah. it starts and ends for the X Men universe, pretty much. What a bizarre yeah. video! What a strange video. When Marvel experiments, like with Jessica Jones, the big tie-in to the MCU is merch. Do you have any cool toys in your room you want to show me? Do you know Captain America? Yeah, well, I haven't seen Jessica Jones thoroughly, so I can't tell you what the connections are. But I don't trust this guy at this point, so. I mean, yeah, it's I... just, it's just, it's just like, yeah, of course, there's gonna be so much. Like Tony Stark could make an appearance in Jessica Jones, and they wouldn't mention it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. He could be their, is... their roommate. <laughs> they would would say anything. It's. it's it... It's such like, of course, there are times when they just push much like from time to time shamelessly, like no, no one's down that. But there are many, many crossovers that are creative and actually do things with the characters. So I, I find he's uh, probably being a bit selective with his examples. And not to mention, like, they... if a kid is in the universe where the Avengers exists, he probably does have action figures for them. I probably would if well, I yeah, was his that's age. Reasonable. Yeah, yeah. X Men movies are not all good. But they do have a universal <laughs> logic that is. What does that universal? They have universal logic, but they don't have good continuity. It's like, how do those reconcile exactly? Stronger uh. than Tommy Westfall's snow globe. Ah, there it is. It's stronger than the snow globe. Is that what he just said? The the, the reference is back. That that paid off, didn't it? <laughs> Wow. Okay. Is he is he saying the the MCU is the snow globe and the X Men is better than the snow globe? Mm. I'm I'm guessing that's what it is. Yeah. Do you understand what? how how like controversial that last Saint Elsewhere episode was with the fucking snow globe? Like people were pissed. Yeah. Because they had been. Was... Okay. <sighs> no, it's fine. Let's. Just... <laughs> Here's another task. Oh no. If you little old you. We're in a movie. Which universe would change you? In X Men, you'd have to decide where you fell in a decades long battle. Do you this decide doesn't matter. With mutants or humans? Well, no, you wouldn't. And if you were a mutant, you might have to make that decision, but even then, you wouldn't have to. Yeah, you wouldn't have to take a side. You He's referring to the narrative people. as well, by the way, which is unfair for Infinity War. You should compare it to Civil War, where you actually had to make a decision on the Accords. That would make more sense. Yeah. This is just stupid. Why are you comparing it to Infinity War, where a giant space alien comes to kill everybody. Infin it's like, yeah, which Infinity side are you going to be like, on? Do you want to die or don't you? <laughs> Pick a side. Oh, yeah. like, okay. Thanos is pretty sound bloke. <laughs> yeah, I'm on board with Thanos. I, I'll be oh, yeah. Thanos In the MCU, wrong. you'd be like this kid in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Your big decision would be to buy some merch. I'm okay. What the fuck so am I Thanos, listening to? Thanos is about to kill you, and you think, you know what, I could use some merch. Did he think that was like, that made sense when he said that? <sighs> As a comparison, in X-Men you choose whether or not ideologically you should fight for the right to exist as a mutant with violence or with political like points and stuff, versus Marvel where all you would do is buy merch. It's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, Marvel yeah. has flirted with a richer universe, one in which it's the sad. lives of all people are transformed by a shared history. But you know what? He's totally reading this from a script and probably has no idea. He, like, he doesn't actually give a shit, clueless. does he? I'm not trying to he, say this... critical of the guy. He's clearly a mouthpiece for the video. But he's reading this as if he's just like, Marvel is this, right? <laughs> like, I don't know. What is are it? movies? This is true. Interstellar is a movie. What are film? Right now, would anybody be surprised if Disney forced a Marvel Star Wars crossover? There was, There would be a time 
where maybe that would be interesting, but I know I know that Disney would fuck it up and then they only, would ruin Marvel by proxy. <laughs> not only that, but I don't even know how you do that because you'd have to get the Avengers to travel through time and over a massive amount of space. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, you would have to have some sort of an interdimensional portal that would transport you to a place far away that but, also brought you far back in time. Um... And then, I, <clears throat> I just think the Jedi turned into the wizards from Harry Potter. So. To clarify, I would be surprised. I don't think Star Wars, and I don't think Disney's going to do that. I think they'll yeah, keep the, so the IP either. separated. I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah. They, they the probably right don't choice. want to In the late <laughs> 80s, the Marvel comic Damage Control toyed with the consequences of superhero life. Like Civil War does, which is something that you said has no stakes. Life on the world at large. That made its cameo in Spider-Man Homecoming a thrilling indicator of where the- Which comes out- was that before or after Civil War? But that's the fucking point of the movie! Was that mm -hmm. he's trying to take advantage of the damage the Avengers did in- Well, the aliens did, and they're trying to sell- Spider-Man Homecoming came out after Civil War, I'm pretty sure. I think it did too, um, but, but my point is just like- It's like he just pretends yeah. these films don't exist with this, these comments. MC. I love he says it's a cameo. It's literally this guy's like origin story is that he's a scrap collector. <laughs> he's collecting alien scrap because of Avengers. Do you understand the connection? You could go. It was a world that anybody could imagine themselves in. But until that experimentation transforms the movies, the MCU is just a business strategy. The universe. Of course, it's a business strategy. Yeah, yeah, but as if the X Men are. The can be bad. It can't be good or bad. Like it's not just a business strategy. It's the idea that it's that. like they just want to make money when they release these films. It's like, um, yeah, it's, yeah. That's, money yeah, is that's like an element. Part of it. It's good or bad. They it's can't just, make any more if just, they don't make money. So, doesn't like the film like maybe like have the intention of making money, but you still also like have have the consequences of, of how the film is going to be received and and so on like there are other things that people have to take into account when making these films like that's, that's why i assume they they try to actually i mean for some of them they try and make them good good lord uh and just the idea that he's saying this as if the x-men series was created with no intention of making money or something yeah is still in development If you want just the facts about Marvel, please then check we'll out. Then we'll go fucking look at somebody else. We're not gonna. The biggest corruption scandal in Latin America's history. What? The That's a strange video that? to jump from with this video. <laughs> like, I, I, I have the feeling like they, they probably won't get too much like, uh, too many devout fans. Crossover. What about the Vox Cinematic Universe? Oh Are god. A lot of crossover. <laughs> Well, I mean, did you guys see the uh, the interesting part of this video is that the like dislike bar was insane. This <laughs> like oh yeah, it's awful. like it's like twenty percent, and it's like, you can tell right. It's like what even it was is... his point? Like okay, it is thirty one thousand up and ninety seven thousand down. Oh dear, oh, dear. Oh, this is sad. awful. I mean that was that was just He didn't even make it to the, the 10 minute showing. mark. The, the poor guy. The top comment is anyone else feel like they just watched 9 minutes and 38 seconds of nothing? <laughs> yeah. Much. Yeah, I do. Arnold the, Schwarzenegger. There's a lot of interesting conversations that you could have from this video. You could be like, what are the pluses and cons of the MCU versus the X-Men universe? I'd be like, yeah, I'm up for that. That's cool. It's a conversation, it's just, but a load of different points thrown together and created a, a big ball of fuck all. I mean, you know, it's it's a mess of a video, and I mean, it's... What was, what's he trying to say? I don't know. This is the thing. I think that if we had this guy here, he'd probably be like, I don't know, man. I read this script. I don't, like, I don't know what the I fuck. Mean, he, did, he, did, he did have some very clear eye contact. I'm not sure whether he was just like... Also, he might, yeah, he might have just look at the amount of people who worked on this. I, I, I it makes sense. People work on yeah. something... And get it so wrong. The story editor. Does that mean the script? S story editor sounds more sounds more formal. Sounds more professional. You're not not just a 
a script writer or you're a story four, editor. Five, well, that's so pretentious if that's what that means. <laughs> like the story of this video. Five, six people made this video. Hey, remember, not clickbait. Six people got together and made this awful video. <laughs> But yeah, this got onto number two on trending, I think, as well, which, by the way, it's like, this is the power of clickbait, guys. Like, this is a yeah, nothing okay. video, and just because of the, the thumbnail and the, the name, that's, it's, yeah, it's boosted. It has 1.7 million views. <laughs> I don't know why. It should, it should not have, uh, it should not have really got out of the gates. I think people are curious, it's like, I think oh, I know, I was. on this, and they're like, what? Well, I think it Captain ends. Midnight's responded to this personally, and, um, you know, you'll find a lot of MCU people. I think even the, the Passion of the Nerd guy I've talked about before, people like him, me, and, and whoever else would be like, I'll hear an argument for this, sure, go ahead. Mm. But we did really get it. Because um, he said that Spider-Man Homecoming was surface level, Civil War had no stakes, all you do in these universes, comparatively, is on one buy merch and the other one you get invested in the actual ideological war. It's like, um, none of these things that's are true. Silly. It's just silly. Yeah, that just makes sense. Why would you, why would you say that? Again, it, like, if, like I said, it felt like someone in their thing was like, we need to make a Marvel video and we need it to make it impactful. It's a good time to make a Marvel video. I don't, I don't even know. Like, that's, that's the level of passion that feels like it came from this video. <sighs> why? I don't know. I'm just amused at this. This is a mess. It's it's a hot mess, and uh, it is twenty four percent upvoted. Jesus, oh. beautiful. Oh. What the hell? Just, <laughs> it's the, just, on, like, the ongoing question of how the hell does this even happen? I, I I want to like reflect on it and like like look at the arguments, but there there's just there was just like such a such a different mix of things that you can't pick apart a logical narrative even if you wanted to it's just a mess it's just these ideas in in a mixing bowl i mean at least we knew where the first crossover came from and how they actually crossovered the werewolf and, and the frankenstein monster back in the day they, they were useful yeah. to his uh, point and batman and superman had cake in the fortress of solitude <laughs> well again superman had a fucking big ass knife if you didn't know that, that would you have understood his point be honest if you didn't know that would this video have made sense i'd say it, it elevated this from a one out of ten to a two out of ten i knew it yeah there we nice. go there we go it's, it's and it was because of already. random information just just because i could walk away saying well at least i learned something Good old Vox, mm -hmm. then. Because, again, I haven't seen videos from them, so I'm just assuming this is what they do. <laughs> to be like, oh, good. Mm. Videos that have extremely strong research and reasoning. That's going to be excellent stuff. Um, but, yeah, I think it's safe to say that we'll probably stop there. I'm just going to read out the Super Chats, and then we'll have we'll have a, a, ourselves an outro. Um, of course. So go pee if either of you need to. Uh, excellent time. Uh, I, think we can, I think we can survive this. <laughs> Mueller is better, Mueller sucks, I'll enjoy you fapping later on the better channel. That's that's my second channel, which yes, you guys can find this, uh, this podcast will be on there. Sorry but not sorry, it is all along with DC, DC, DCCU? Is that what it's called into the DCEU? This, uh, this, this cine, the DC Cinematic <laughs> Universe. Oh, that's probably it, yeah. DCCU. I just thought it was the expanded universe, oh, whatever. Uh, both are nothing compared to Raimi Spider-Man or Nolan's Batman. Star Wars Episode Three had a better build-up than Civil War or Infinity War, but Vox is restarted. Well, thank you for the uh, donation, of course, but I would have to disagree. Um, I think the DCU fits the bill. I'd hate living in these cities with all the Dragon Ball Z shit going on, but Vox will make nine points in disguise of one for that, too. I don't even think they brought up, like... The idea that you wouldn't want to be in these universes because destruction happens, but hey. The Hateful Eight is better a Marvel movie than Infinity War. See raw, yes. Um, I like Hateful Eight. I, I think Marvel is... I like Hateful Eight. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, this is the wiki game of film analysis. I mean, yeah, it looks like he got a lot of stuff from... I, I could imagine that somebody on their team knew about that stuff. They had, like, a comic book person that was like, yeah, I can answer this stuff. They had, like, scans of actual comic so that was that was See, pretty back neat. In 1939. <laughs> Fake brand cigarettes would unify like 25% of film and TV by Vox's logic. Oh yeah, yeah, the how arbitrary the connections are in that snow globe. It's like yes, everything is in a giant universe if you're going to be that uh vague about it. 
Um, you know, this character talks about pencils, and pencils <laughs> exist within this universe. I remember tricking my mum into believing Nick Fury was the demo man from TF2. <laughs> 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 uh, next MCU phase might be Avengers versus X Men. Yeah, they could do it. We'll have to. That's going to be a clusterfuck, though. That um, would be a clusterfuck, and it would be like how how bad would the X Men lose? In oh well, that's the thing because well they got the Phoenix though. That's going to be the next one. I'm assuming she'll die by the end of it or not. Who knows? We'll find out. Uh, in Spider-Man Homecoming, they're building a Lego Death Star, so I don't see why Marvel would do that. We know Star Wars is a movie in the MCU. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I doubt they'll join them up. Um, unlike Civil War, Dildo Baggins. Excellent. Uh, Dildo Saggins is the porn parody, Lord of the G-Strig. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you all so much for those donations. Um, we've had a wonderful little stream. I was, I was going to say, uh, I will start posting a link your channel, the right opinion. And before you say anything, I'll say that um, he makes a lot of videos that I actually really like in terms of, you know, obviously not the one that he made about me and Rags, that's less preferable, but um, <laughs> for example, the, the video you made on the animators and the, I don't know how to explain this one, but the one about the calendar <laughs> that was expensive. Oh, Zoella. Yeah, that one. Zoella, and yeah. and um, the one that I obviously watched, you put out recently about um, Behind the Meme. They like yeah. They 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 reasonable breakdowns of what's happened with this particular subject over time, like where it starts, how it develops, what people responded to it with, and let's say the right opinion about it at the end in in a sarcastic <laughs> tone. So um, consider checking out some videos, and obviously um, consider subscribing. It's completely up to you. If you if you want uh, Tiro, you can try and sell your channel. Why should they subscribe to you? I don't know. <laughs> if, if you, if, I mean, I mean, if you uh, if you enjoy my my content, then definitely drop a subscription. I'm really accessible to. If you want to reach me on Twitter, you can uh, at the right opinion and Discord as well. Uh, I, I'm trying to be an open person. I'm definitely trying to make uh, the best content I can, and obviously, I do appreciate the the feedback coming in. So. Um, yeah, you just gotta just see what you think. Obviously, if you don't like my content, I wouldn't expect you to subscribe. But you know, give it a give it a check out. Tell me what you think. I do try and try and mix mix it up from the normal commentary genre, uh, which is people just like spitballing opinions. And actually, try and give them an analytical look and say, well, let's look at the facts and then let's see what we can what we can do. Mm -hmm. Um, and then of course my co-host is, is is rags which you guys are probably more than aware of and you'll find his link in the description um you'll be coming out with a video soon i hope right rags um <laughs> i think actually just a second ago oh yeah um 20 minutes ago i just got the i just got the final um finalized finished assets uh, new art stuff for the channel uh, while we were streaming, that just got mm. sent to me. Um, but here's the kicker. In let's see, it's the 26th on the 30th, like at seven in the morning on the 30th. I leave to catch a plane because I'll be going to the Grand Canyon for until November 7th. Um, so I'll be gone during that time. I'll, I'm hiking across the Grand Canyon. So, so you're going to be on the same up upload schedule as me then, is it? Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I thought I would got I, I thought I got this art stuff back pretty soon. But what I can do is I'm actually about to go hike in uh, about an hour and a half, two hours, which is why I said I had to leave at five uh, to do practice for that. But tonight, what I can do is I can put all the art assets together and maybe I can get something hammered out here. Mm -hmm. But I am not certain. So, but don't worry, like I'm like I've got all this stuff ready and that's kind of what I was waiting for. I took a little break, did a little rebrand of sorts. Not a, not a rebrand, but a refresh. Um but yeah, I I know and I've been saving links on stuff to reply to. But do not you worry. There just might be kind of a extra delay because of this trip I have to take really soon. Fair that's enough. just an unfortunate coinky dink. I I'm still working on the TFA series. I've put update. There's an update I put up yesterday on on the Patreon. If you want some sort of 
detailed, more detailed breakdowns, and they're not, you don't have to pay for them, they're all there, uh, available, it's just that I don't have to keep sending them in different places and stuff. Um, and of course, if you want to see this, this whole podcast, then you'll be able to find it on my second channel, which, I just copied that link, I'm assuming that's my second channel, I hope it is. Either way, thank you all for, for watching, and of course, the generous donations, and much respect, Mr. Tiaro, for coming on, I appreciate the clarification nah, and the, uh, yeah. the effort. I appreciate I appreciate the discussion as always, and I hope it's uh, I hope it's given some sort of closure to the situation. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. Certainly, um, myself, uh, I would say, and hopefully for the fans in the in that old chat, chat's yeah. often very reasonable. So it's it's yeah. Sure I, th I think the I think it's just it, it's with Quinton they have their biggest, which season. is probably never going to be resolved. But which is probably never going to be resolved. But I I have I will have no problem uh, uh, memeing him into the into the future um but yeah so that's about it thank you all for, for for giving your 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 attention and uh you guys for 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 responding and talking for the videos we'll see you next week no idea exactly when me and rags will figure out something with somebody um tune so. in next time for the <laughs> for episode 11 the standalone sequel to episode <laughs> 10 of every frame of pause oh pause Every that, no, <laughs> well, wait, yeah, that is it. Fuck, Every thought... frame of pause, yeah, boy. Goodbye. <laughs>